Hi, everyone. Hello. It is Friday. And you know what that means. It's Friday. Damn, son. Where'd you find this? What's going on? You having a good one? I'm put on, I'm put on the glasses. I uh, I need to... I guess I just need to wear the glasses until... Uh, until they are appropriately broken in. Apparently that is something that will happen over time. I talked to my optometrist yesterday, my optometrist's office yesterday, and they were like, yeah, uh, you should just keep wearing them. And I'm like, okay. And it's, uh, I don't know, it's, it's uh, the monitor distance is getting a little bit better than it was last week. And uh, it's still a little bit blurrier with the glasses on than with the glasses off. But uh, it, when I wear it for a couple hours, it kind of, it kind of dials in a little bit. And, um, but, but I still can't, um, I can't read my phone with these glasses on. But they said, yeah, keep at it. Keep wearing them. And it'll, it'll happen for you. And I'm like, that's exciting. I want it to happen for me. I want to see good. That's my goal. I just want to see good. I'm going to see uh, this ghost tropical mango. I'm going to see if this is already on our list. Because I know we drank some other ghosts. Um, so it may already be ranked. But I'm going to check here. We have ghost sour patch kids red berry. Up at number three. Yeah, that's that's definitely doing okay. Tropical mango is our currently our number twelve energy drink. Let's uh you know, if you haven't seen the rankings lately, let's uh Can I just I can't just hit control A and just a uh, notion I notion is pretty good, but it's also notion sucks. There are things about notion that are highly convenient, and I like a lot of things about what it is capable of. But also, in some ways, Notion is not great. There are the current standings uh, for for the drinks. We're 1 to 39 here. And uh, yeah, I'm going to crack open a, a number 12, a Ghost Tropical Mango. It's been harder to find um, one-off cans of, of drinks that I haven't drank yet in this area. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, I, I, we've, we've, you, you know, you have watched me go through the process of having to buy a case of a drink I haven't had before and how that has been a little dicey at times. So, um, though, you know, as we have filled out the list, uh, that was the C4 smart energy black cherry was the case I bought and also the Zoa fruit punch. So, you know, one example of it went pretty well with the black cherry. And, um, and then the fruit punch, the Zoa fruit punch is, a is not, is no good, you know, but it, it's hard to be a good tasting low calorie. Oh wait, no, it's not. Number one rock stars, uh, zero of fruit, fruit punch is the, which I think they've changed the branding on that. I don't know. Anyway. Um, yeah. So, you know, here, here's to, here's to Friday. Let's get tropical mangoed up. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, cool. Um, so Atari 50, the anniversary celebration came out uh, this morning. I got a hold of it uh, last night and just kind of fired it up to like get a, a good look at the menus and get a sense of, of what we're getting into here. But I didn't, I didn't go look at any of the stuff too closely because I figured we would uh, go through some of that together here uh, this morning. I am, oh, I am, I am excited about this thing. This seems like the, in, in a lot of ways, this seems like it's the ultimate realization of this format of like interviews and just doodads and doohickeys and little things from Atari's past. It, it really feels like that they had a lot of source material to dig through and, you know, and over the years you've seen a ton of weird stuff, old Atari stuff kind of get out and, and you see scans of internal documents and stuff. So I assume just this, a lot of that stuff is in here. Um, and they've put it on. Let's fire it up. Let's fire it up. 
because I'm fired up. This is before you know. Before we fired up, I guess I'll say this collection covers a very specific time in my life uh, in, in some ways. Like the, you know, it, it is maybe the first example I can think of of a collection that has a dedicated section for the Atari 8-bit home computer line, which was my first good uh, gaming machine, was an Atari 400, and then later we upgraded to an Atari 800. Um, you know, before that, I had a Fairchild Channel F. You know, there's no Fairchild Channel F collection out there. Where's that? Where's that, Digital Eclipse? Don't, don't actually... Don't actually do that. The controllers are too hard to... Uh, um, to you know to emulate <laughs> um and not worth it once you once you do get it set up i guess so i'm gonna close this i don't need notion open to need to look at these energy drinks anymore um so this this uh you know th there have been a ton of collections of just like here's atari anniversary here's atari this here's atari collection action here's atari that over the years, there have been just a zillion of these things, and um, none of them have really tapped into the, the Atari that I kind of grew up caring about. And and this is kind of the first one that does. And, and and yeah, I don't know. This seems like the next step. Well, we'll, we'll get into it, you know, because I haven't really dug into it. I, I could be wrong. Maybe this is terrible. Who knows? But um, the the thing I'm looking for is something like a next step beyond what was in that Blizzard collection. Um, which had great video interviews and a lot of just interesting, cool stuff in it along the way. And the, the structure of this is pretty interesting. So think, look at it. Like right off the bat here, The, the front and center of this menu is this timeline. Like the first thing you get into are these, you know, is, is the museum. It's not some side menu off to the, the back where it's just like, hey, we found this stuff in the back room and uh, took some pictures and here you go. It's like, this is a, like, they're, the thinking here is that this is how you will experience this collection. You don't have to at any time. You can hit the X button and just go like, show me games and and go through the platforms and stuff. But um, I think it's weird that 800 is all the way over here and in between Lynx and Jaguar and not kind of over near the 5200 stuff because that's basically... So basically this collection's trash is what I'm saying. Because why would the 800 be all the way over here? Who did this? Someone really screwed up. No. Um, so yeah, let's... Let's get into this a little bit here. Yep, Syzygy. I feel like bits and pieces of this story have become... Like, if, if you... I suppose this is something that if you're one of those, if you're of a certain age type things, but if you've been following games long enough, there's, there are a lot of things about the Atari story that have just become common knowledge. You know, there's just certain bits of lore that, um, are not a mystery, but I want to see it laid out on a timeline. I'm hoping that they uncovered some fun new things or, you know, things that I didn't know. Cause I, I got, I'm, I'm not, following this stuff as closely. All right. Manufactured by Nutting Associates. Uh, I believe Dave Nutting uh did some stuff for some of the Midway. Uh, they did well they did, um, I forget. Big month for the Nutting Associates here in November. Um Anyway, this is a computer space machine. If you remember when we played Arcade Paradise uh, last week, there the empathy cabinet looks a whole lot like this. They're kind of going for this style of cabinet. 
Um, okay, so what do we have? And then down here, in the year 2000, Jerry just for an ad for. That's a Some good reason, little. I'm looking through the. It's the right font. San Jose Mercury in the just random stuff section for sale, and I see world's first video game computer space. No price, just just call. I'm like wow, I'm pretty interested in this. So I called the guy. I said, so uh, you got a computer space? Yeah. He goes, yeah. First game ever. Okay, great. Um, what color is it? And he goes, well, what color do you want? I'm like, wow, this is getting very interesting because who has a whole bunch of computer spaces and who would know that they came in all these different colors? He goes, I've got a yellow, a, a solid blue, metal flake blue, and metal flake red. And he goes, a whole bunch of other games too. Okay, <laughs> great. Uh, Want to come up and see him. These were in a Quonset hut on a sunflower seed farm off of Highway 80 in Dixon, California, halfway between, you know, the Bay Area and Sacramento. And these things hadn't been moved in, you know, probably since 1975. And so I got in touch with Nolan and showed him the pictures and scratched his head and then like a light bulb went off in his head. He goes, these were Ted Dabney's. These were Ted Dabney's units. This was his route. When he left, he took a route that we had, and he goes, this yellow one's the first one. He goes, I know it. That yellow one is the very first one. I kept the first one, which is a beautiful yellow computer space, and I kept Pong number 46, and we got the rest of them running and working as good as we could. We got it all for $5,000. Man. I don't regret the purchase one bit. Yeah. Not for a minute. Fucking five grand. I the the font work, the use of the Atari fonts and stuff in some of the videos and stuff, that's that's already really good. Nice clean scan. This is uh, just about, you know, with, with between the higher, uh, it's a good resolution, and then, you know, you could AI uh, res it up probably the rest of the way. I'm going to say the assets in this are good enough for you to make bootleg t-shirts of the Syzygy logo. Oh, bootleg t-shirts of the Syzygy logo. Okay. So then, yeah, 72, they changed from Syzygy to Atari. Well, I'd say <laughs> 30 years to pretty much the present, the arcades have been relegated to the back rooms and the side streets and uh, generally been an unsavory type of place. What we want to do is bring the amusement game to age. If we can give it a new zip and a pizzazz, it's going to be uh, financially successful. As we all need a new zip a very and a pizzazz, you know? Time activity of the American people. The marriage of traditional pinball machines and computer technology has resulted in the birth of a new breed of amusement games. And Nolan Bushnell is the man handing out the cigars. Bushnell has developed two such games, Computer Space and Pong and believes that they and others like them will move the pinball industry out of America's bus stations and bowling alleys and into the space age. In 1971, Those filthy bus stations and bowling space, alleys. ...the sold production rights to Nutting Associates of Mountain View, California for royalties based on the number of games sold. 500 Nutting Associates. Sales already exceed 1,500 machines. I've seen a lot of Japanese videos like that. Computer space like Pong sells for around $1,000 and is played on the screen of a standard television set, which has been programmed to display the desired game. 
In computer space, the player controls a rocket ship, which is trying to shoot down enemy flying saucers while avoiding their missiles. If the player scores more hits than the enemy saucers, he gets one free play. By the time Bushnell invented Pong in 1972, he was able to form his own company, Syzygy Corporation in Santa Clara, California, to produce the game. He has already sold over a thousand machines and expects to sell 10,000 in the United States by the end of the year. Hmm. Pong, as the name might indicate, is a game of video ping pong. The two players turn dials which control their electronic paddles and volley with an equally electronic ball. The first player to score 15 points wins. While Bushnell did design and program both his games, the technology he uses dates back to the late 1950s. Thanks to research by the Defense Department in the wake of Sputnik, Bushnell is now able to act out his dream of a nation inhabited by thousands of Pong and computer space games. The government spent millions of dollars to, on this technology, and as a result, now it's cheap enough that we can put it into a game and sell it for 25 cents for uh, a few minutes and, uh, and make a dollar at it. It's, it's a um, really. It's something that the research and development really was was done many years ago, and now it's cheap enough that uh, with PC boards and integrated circuits, we can use that technology to our advantage. The basic electronic unit of Bushnell's games is the integrated circuit. Each of these small chips is capable of storing large amounts of information. <laughs> large amounts. The program for a game <laughs> is determined by specific combinations of these units to form a PC, or printed circuit board. The printed circuit board then tells the TV screen what to do. A single printed circuit board is all that is required to operate Pong, whereas 15 years ago it would have taken enough tubes and wiring to fill an average house. Bushnell first saw the commercial potential of video games in a game called Space War, which had been played at computer centers around the country for several years. We used to play uh, Space War a lot at the AI project at Stanford, which is uh, a big, big computer complex. And um, one day it just hit, you know, this is a lot of fun. You ought to be able to package it and sell it for a price. And, you know, one thing leads to another, and pretty soon, from doodling on a scratch pad, you're actually working out some basic block diagrams, and from there you think, boy, you know, it's going to work. I wonder if that's fake B-roll of of just of someone just like just just point at the board and and do stuff like it has the look of fake B-roll, you know. Um point at this. That's cool. You know, it's it's weird cuz you don't think of video games as being so old that footage that looks like that would exist. You know what I mean? Like that early 70s kind of stuff. Um, it's kind of crazy. Some Eugene Jarvis quotes. Wade Rosen, the current CEO. Yeah. It's interesting that this seems like the first thing that has had the Atari name on it in years that actually seems like it might be good. You know what I mean? Like all the Atari hotel and Atari blockchain, like it, and the, the VCS and all the other just weird stuff that Atari has gotten into over the last, what, a decade or more at this point. Like, all right, so we can take a look at a point. Oh, wait, I got it. Wait, why do I bring the, there we go. When you hide the controls, you don't know how to bring the controls back up. That's so that's that's a pong cabinet, and so now we can just hit Y and then and then we are playing pong. Right, pong was not a one-player game, was it? So I'm using both analog sticks here to do this. We got mouse? Yeah, we got mouse. Okay. We got mouse up and down. 
Hmm. But not left and right. I wonder... So something I'm kind of curious about is I've got this uh, spinner controller here that I bought mostly to play Arkanoid on the Mister. And I believe it registers as mouse left right not mouse up down so i wonder if there's a way to make that work well here i am playing pong with myself all right it's pong so now is this new footage or is this You know what the Atari motto is? Innovative leisure, right? Well, it didn't say innovative arcade games. It didn't say innovative video games. It said innovative leisure. It was broad from day one. I mean, Nolan always had a consumer. Gonna start talking about these hot tub stories. Do. And I wound up doing the wrong thing and making a hit coin op game, right? When I was at Ampex, I learned how to make sync generators, synchronizing the basic fundamental uh, uh, circuit necessary to get a TV signal because we had to generate an analog signal. So you do that and you get the ball at one speed and you put paddles up and it's not, it's a very, very boring game. And uh, uh, so I had to, I added the speed up and I added the angles off of that just, you know, what to make it playable, interesting. And, uh, and so I eh, started getting a little interesting. That's cute. And Nolan said, well, it's got to have score. We had a pretty good game. And hey, great. So what are you going to do for sound? He goes, sound? I'm already over budget. What am I going to do? Uh, uh, and Nolan said, well, I want the sound of a roar of a crowd of thousands applauding your win. And Ted said, I want boos and hisses. And I'm thinking, how do I do that? Listen, I got video. I got the goddamn game up. Uh, now you wanted me to do this. I'll be right back. So I was pissed around for a day and poked around sounds that already existed in the vertical sync generator and gated them out with the 555 timer. I love it. Years later, the sound is so well thought out, so appropriate. It was like, are you kidding me? It was just, you know, just thrown together in, in spite of what the boss said. And so uh, that, that was how, that was how uh, Pong came to be. Cool. Syzygy engineered. The newest two player video skill game. It's a low key cabinet, suitable for sophisticated locations. Yeah, I wonder if they, you know, if they had digital samples of, of people roaring and, and making noise and all that sort of stuff. I wonder, you know, do they, would they have gone the route of putting like a tape loop in there? Like what would have been the era appropriate way to make something like that happen? Oh yeah, Pong doubles. Be nice if everyone was identified here. Cause that's a lot of people. Like, what are they all doing? <laughs> Maybe they don't know. Puppy Pong. Meant to be installed in the waiting rooms of pediatric offices. I have yeah, I did not know. I this this is new to me. Puppy Pong. What do these cabinets look like? Oh, do they just look like those ones on the left? Or they I mean I feel like I've seen that one on the left. Like this. I feel like I've seen one of these kind of bar top Pong units, but one's actually shaped like a doghouse. 
this uh this art is uh Oof. <laughs> what's what's happening here? Okay, so yeah, a whole video on the Pong machine that broke filled with money. That absolutely appropriate. So everybody's heard the Pong story. Probably everybody's heard the Pong story, but I've heard it many times, uh, and from Al Alcorn himself, who designed Pong, so. Uh, the story I've heard is that they installed one of the first Pong machines in a tavern and let people play it um, as a test. Put it out into an arcade and see if it makes money. I mean, that's that's the market. They could not get out to Chicago My understanding was to interview Eugene Jarvis in person. A, cabinet, uh, a, a tabletop, simple, simple cabinet uh, over the weekend and uh, a coin mech bolted to the side of the cabinet tabletop type of big thing was sit on a barrel. Placing a interactive video machine somewhere and having people play it was still a relatively new concept. Nobody knew if it was gonna go. Oh, what is the name of the bar in Palo Alto? San Jose? No, it was huh. Andy Caps. Uh, it was Santa Clara? Sunnyvale. So we, we'll put it in Andy Caps. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a coin op game, be it fragile and humble. Uh, and and so so we did. Well, my memory is that he gets a phone call, the game's busted, which of course is the usual thing you get on a support line. It doesn't work. What is it and in what way does it not work? Well, it doesn't work. The bar owner or manager at the time kind of yelled at them and, and like accused them of their game being shoddy because it had already broken down and it was no longer functioning or working. And they get a call, you know, later on that night and like, hey, this thing broke, you know. <laughs> Come and, come and peek. Found their limit on the cursing. Game and get it out of here. <laughs> and this thing broke. Other guy said pissed around and goddamn, but we got to draw the anyway, line somewhere. We got the word that it stopped working, and I figured it could be anything. And I'd go out there and take a look at it. And uh, so I went to the, uh, went to the machine, uh, and the first thing you do is you want to try to play the game. Because the machine was on in a tracked mode. So there was, it was working, but you couldn't start a game. So you open up the coin, the coin box to basically flip the micro switch to give yourself a free game because I'm not going to waste a quarter, you know. And so they went down to see what's wrong with the machine to fix it. And what they found out was that it wasn't broken. It was just that so many people had played it, they'd filled the coin box with quarters, and it was jammed, and it couldn't take any more. So many people had played it that, you could, that it couldn't accept any more money. The game is broken because it's stuffed so full of quarters. Completely stuffed with quarters. It, and it was a small, I remember it was kind of small. <laughs> Funny if that was the only appearance of Cliff in the whole thing. He wouldn't take it. <laughs> when I opened up the coin mech, you know, it's, all these quarters just gushed out. So, whoa, that's impressive. It's the equivalent of like crashing a server. When you launch a new website and it's so popular. So they crashed the server on Pong. And one of the other reasons it was also so popular is because you could play it with one hand while you're still holding a pint in your other hand. Um, and that also was one of those things that, you know, eventually many, many years later led to the rise of the fun barcades that we have, you know, and we can enjoy now. As Al will always say, I don't know if it's as direct twinkle, a line as that, but twinkle sure. His eye, he goes, this is a problem I can fix. Basically, the way it worked was you take the money, the, the, the deal you have, and you split the take with the owner of the bar. And so I would, so I did that, and I had this sack of quarters, and the next day I come into work and I said, I got the machine fixed, and here's the problem. Goddamn thing's making too much money. And no one, really? But it was, it was one of those great moments where something that uh, supposedly was failing was, was actually such a huge success that no one could recognize. It was truly the ugly duckling version of technology. Because remember, no one thought, I'm, he was like, this is just the placeholder until we get to design the really good game. Because who's going to play this stupid shit ass game? They went on to produce all of these classic, memorable arcade titles for years that allowed them that to we're going to put on the blockchain. Be so much more than a one-hit wonder. So that's my understanding of the history of Pong. It's a great story if it's true. <laughs> when a story is good, you know there's some doubt about it. Like, well, that's too good to be really true. It's probably a boring version of it. That's actually true. Uh, you know, I, 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 it sounds, it sounds realistic to me. You know, I mean, uh, I've, you know, I've kind of seen that happen in my own. And, and when you do get a really great game, the coins will just overflow, and uh, 
um, you know, it's it's uh, it's kind of a cool feeling. <laughs> anyway, that's how that all happened. Yeah. That's a fun one. That's like, that's something that like, I'm sure like every interview subject they talk to for the whole thing, they could ask like, tell me your Pong story because everyone has heard some version of that for sure. I'm not going to go through and watch every video on this, you know, um, this is one of my favorite genres of like seventies arcade flyer or whatever, just like lady standing next to machine. There's also like a sub genre of like, I don't know, topless girl on roller skates holding onto a pinball machine. Like there's, you know, versions of that from, I don't know where that stuff originally showed up, but, um, this is from the originators of Pong. It's an interesting Atari font there. Super Space Gamesmanship. Major components tested to mil spec 883. Okay, <laughs> here's another one of these. What is what is the all right, we've got a game called Gotcha. Let's... Oh, this is the game with the weird boob controllers on top of that. And she is like, I am getting away! And he is like, no, you are not, Gotcha! The pursuer, the pursuer a square, chases the pursued. It's a pell-mell cat and mouse game either way. I don't know that I've ever seen a gotcha machine in, in person. But yes, they were... Okay, apparently they were meant to resemble breasts. Not just a... I don't think gotcha is in the collection to be played, unfortunately. But And Touch Me is like a Simon type thing. They did a handheld version of this later. What a cool, weird, like, no screen. It's just like, you know, because it's just making noises and lights and stuff. That's a cool, this is a cool image, too. Small, modern package. Yeah, I guess. You've got to play it again because you must be able to do better than the first time. It's funny. Like it's, it's of course it's like this, right? Because these are flyers meant to get people to buy the machines to put in their locations. Right? So, but arcade flyers are really funny because so many of them are just like, it's a quarter muncher. It's like, like we're going to practically steal the money out of people's pockets and, Okay, so they get a little bit into the key games stuff. Um, tank. Oh, okay. So here is... Quadra Tank. One of the that's that's this is fun art. Look at that. That's cool. Game modes including capture the flag. Yeah, I guess why wouldn't you? Four player local. Oh I mean, I guess we need some AI tanks, huh? Ice terrain, wow. Let's try to fault Get my points. Ready. 
Oh, it's oh, it's okay. It's dual joystick with the like tank controls. Shot at range. Shot. And then the triggers to fire. That's cool. I, I was thinking it was gonna be like combat, like style, like single joystick and a button type thing. Oh, oh. Rocket. Rocket. Shot range. Range range. Shot. Speed. Shot. Ah. Range. Rocket. Damn. Where am I? Oh, I'm over here. Speed. Dropping all your power-ups, like it's almost like a bo Rocket. like a bomberman esque Shot. take. Range. Shot. Shot. Laser. Laser. Speed. You better run. Ah! Ah! Range. Range. Man. Range. Range. Basti. Rocket. Shot. Range. Laser. Speed. Oh, I can turn the turret too. Jeez. Okay. Speed. Range. 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 Hell shot. Laser shot. Rocket. Oh, man. Rocket. Shot. Shot. Range. Yeah, like these power ups are pretty. Laser. Are kind of. Speed. Speed. Kind of Bomberman, Bomberman esque. Like you can fire multiple shots. Speed. Speed. Shot. Like. Range. Speed. Speed. Range. Hell. Range. Yeah. I got worked. Speed. Alright, let's try again here. Maybe turn it down a little bit. Uh, let's try... Let's have two AI tanks instead of three. Let's try ice. Classic shot. We want ricochet. We definitely want ricochet. Oh, ice is crazy. I wish it made the noise... The Rage. noise that combat made when, oh, when you had Ricochet. The do, 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 do. Like, that would be cool. Rage. Over here just doing donuts. Speed. AI is not so good at handling uh, the ice, from the looks of it. Oh, you can get fucking cruising. Look at it. That's... Oh, God. Speed. <laughs> All right. Range. This feel you know, this feels like it could have had like thirty more options. Maybe it's for the best that it doesn't. But like, when you think about like stuff like uh, can you get hit by your own ricocheting shots? Because in this, it, it seems like you cannot. But. Range. But what if you could? That would be a disaster. Range. And I guess the actual answer is like, yeah, maybe Shot. don't put that in because Range. it would be a disaster. Speed. Speed. Yeah, more speed. Health. Shot. Speed. 
shame this doesn't have online. Range. Speed. Shot. I mean, that's, a, that's probably a big ask, right? <laughs> oh. Shot speed. Range. Range. Health. Range. Speed. Oh. That's a, oh, jeez. Oh. The fact that you can get hit twice by the same bullet is uh speed brutal range Health. Speed. all right that time i gave him what for gave him the business it's a great logo. Oh, what? I mean, I, they even made, like, manuals that seem era appropriate. Button three, swap control scheme, A, B, or C. In the B scheme, the, only the left stick is used for movement and steering, which is closer to combat. Okay, in the C scheme, left stick does forward and backward, and right stick steers. C scheme is for lunatics. Mines. Okay, I... Hmm. Fire, drop mine, and, and swap control scheme. Okay, so I guess I... Maybe there's just a another button in there I wasn't finding. I just realized now that everything is quiet that... My heater has turned on. I don't want that. We want it cool. We want to keep it cool. Turn that off. Okay. This is, this is a fun, like, it's cool that the manual is designed in kind of this way. No looking at the other player's quadrant in split-screen mode. That's cheating. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, and you can just play. Friendly fire hurts. Okay, so I, hmm. So you, you can get hit by your own. Well, I wonder if that means like when you're in team mode, if you can hurt your other player, because it seemed like I was hitting myself with some of those ricocheting shots and didn't seem like it was causing any trouble, but I don't know. Yeah, that's neat. It seems like the sort of thing that if you if you took this and expanded upon it with like a zillion different weird options and then added online play that you could put this out in say an iDarb-esque fashion. Let me let me design my own tank with a pixel art editor iDarb style. That would be cool. Home Pong. My grandparents had some kind of Home Pong machine, but I don't know which one it was. I don't think it was actually made by Atari. I think it was some bootleg Atari pinball. Yeah, so there were some... Do they have any... The Atarians... Time 2000, huh? Yeah, some of these weird... Uh, Atari did some... I don't know if this is one of them. It looks like it is. Yeah. This is a wide-body pinball machine. Atari did some of these that are just wider than the standard pinball machine. And also look at the weird kind of dual flipper layout at the bottom. The Atari pinball stuff is super strange. Um, does it... Is there a, a better... Yeah. Yeah, so even, yeah, the Atarians is also wider. And this, like, four flipper rig up, it's just a strange. They did some weird stuff. I wonder if they're going to show it. I wonder if they will show it because they did the Superman pinball machine. But I wonder if, like, they were able to 
secure whatever rights they needed to secure to show Superman in here. Even the coin max, the weird like circular drop in quarter things just in the, in the start button on these machines just really. Yeah, the Atari pinballs were freaking weird. I don't think I've ever seen Airborne Avenger. A new high in pinball adventure. This would be a good. This would also be a good t-shirt. Programming by Eugene Jarvis. So there you go. And and the first pinball game designed by Steve Ritchie. So that's... Jeez. Man. That's cool. Oh, and Hercules. This is the weird... Yeah, so this, this thing, if you've ever been to California Extreme or, you know, hopefully other good arcade festivals, I don't know what you want to call them, uh, conventions... Sometimes you'll see a Hercules machine. It is eight feet deep and three feet wide. It is this big, ridiculous. It's insane how big this game is. And I, yeah, this was another one I don't think I knew existed until I saw it at California Extreme. It was just like, here's this fucking massive thing. Um, <laughs> just about a three or five ball liberal slash conservative options for higher profits. A very funny way of putting that, I guess. Uh, yeah, so Superman not listed as part of this, but I guess that's you know, you can't go to the DC folks and say, Hey, let us let us put in a picture of Superman into our game without it being a thing, maybe. Breakout, really good marquee on the breakout cabinets, I always thought. Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak, they made Breakout. Pretty weird to think. Like, would, you know, Arkanoid have happened or anything, you know, like, if if not for... This is, let's get the mouse back in the window here, because, honestly, I don't want to play this with an analog stick. Now this, I could probably hook up my spinner and play just fine. My arcade, you know, so I, I didn't really start, you know, I obviously I, I didn't really go to arcades until I was, I don't know, six or seven or, no, I would have, yeah, something around there in the early 80s. And so Breakout had been out for a few years, but you still saw some, some Breakout cabinets here and there. My local arcade had one. And there's something about, I'm sure there's a name for them, but like these, these white circular buttons that they've got, the, the, like the ones on the pinball machines that I was talking about. I just always thought those were such cool buttons. They didn't ever use them for game stuff. It wasn't like a, you know, any button you had to hit a lot, like a fire button or anything like that. But it was like just the, it was usually like the start game button or something like that. They're just cool feeling, bigger, smooth buttons. I don't know. I don't know. And then those dome buttons that you see over there, the one to two players, you know, that those dome buttons were used in Missile Command and some other stuff like that. They had lights on the top of them in some cases. Ugh. I, yeah, I, I don't have the I don't have a cable ready to try to hook this spinner up and see if I can get it working, but that's something I'll definitely try. Um, the working prototype came as a surprise to Al Alcorn, as it was not an assigned project. Yeah, this is good. Look at this guy. Instapart service. 24-hour parts turnaround is available to keep profits coming non-stop. And also all the all of the arcade flyers. This is something you saw into the 90s and, and probably, you know, just, just arcade flyers in a general sense would have this blank spot where the distributor could have like a rubber stamp or something with their phone number and address and stuff and just stamp it down. 
um, to say like, hey, I'm the guy you call. If you want breakout, you got to call me. Don't call Atari. I'm the guy who sells Atari games in this state or this area, this county, whatever it is. You want them, you come see me. Contact your Atari distributor. Okay, new breakout. Also good art. This is it's riffing off of the, I guess the Atari 2600 art. Which is a vastly different take of like weird space bricks compared to what this was. <laughs> Speaking of new breakout games, Shatter, uh, a remastered version of Shatter just came out, I think on, or is about to come out. I think maybe came out last week. It was originally a PlayStation 3 downloadable game. Killer soundtrack. It's, you know, kind of an Arkanoid style game. Um, okay, let's actually play it. Sure, yeah. An alarm clacks and blares in your cockpit. As you ready your defensive shield and prepare your kinetic cannon, you realize, you suddenly realize, why Iris has remained a myth for all these years. Color chains and cavities. What are all these mechanics? What are we doing? Left analog stick move, right analog stick quick move. Right trigger quick move. Left trigger whammy mode. All right, all right, whammy mode. Well, so far, this just seems like break. I don't get what this is all about. What the hell? We'll say it's a little weird that the bricks are breaking before the ball gets there. Really rotten collisions on Neo Breakout. <laughs> This became the reason why I didn't play a lot of Breakout. Once you get down to... Oh, God. So like what is this is the is it super breakout that had this layout with the balls in the middle i forget what the and so we're we're keeping track of color over there which is weird Balls, balls, balls. The whole like quick movement on the right stick actually it was something that reading it seemed really strange, but in practice is really good because you can kind of just like go, oh God. And, and so like you're moving normally and you're like, that's not going to cut it. We need to, we need speed immediately. Well, I screwed that up. I don't know what this cube in the background is, is all about. I 
I like that at the end of the level, you break out of it. Break out. Yeah. Huh. Huh. <laughs> That's uh, an interesting little twist. On the color chain st uh, stuff. Oh, we've got a some kind of time thing now, huh? Okay, the timer's filling up around the edges. Does that mean that, like, the bricks are going to move down? Is that what it's implying? I guess we'll find out. Yep. Get up there and do some real damage. Okay. Oh, that was whammy mode. I was like, oh right, the left bumper's supposed to do something. Oh god. Alright, I got an achievement for... Beat a level with the ball in whammy speed. A little bit easier to get some color chains when there's only two colors. Screw it. <laughs> okay, maybe maybe not screw it. No, screw it. Yeah, no. <laughs> maybe if I hook this spinner up, uh yeah, and, you know, it's, you know, an analog stick is never going to be the ideal way to play. You can use the mouse. Which I I never, I don't know, the mouse. Obviously, it's better than an analog stick. But it still never felt quite right. Cuz it's not. I mean, whatever, it's not. A spinner is is right. I don't know if you saw uh uh, Digital Eclipse did, uh, they put up a 3D printable spinner gizmo that you can bolt to an Xbox controller to kind of have something resembling a spinner, which is really neat. If I had a 3D printer, oh man. I always like to break through mode, which is where the ball just goes all the way through the blocks to the top, right out of the gate. Oh my, what? I, okay, I don't know what. Or, oh jeez. Okay. Oh, it's it's when you hit the top, your paddle shrinks. Yeah, that was a. And we got the timer. We've got a lot of balls, so it'll be okay.
this is pretty good. I like the idea of the, the color stuff and just having some different things going on in the levels. It's, uh... But I also feel like Arkanoid has kind of ruined my appreciation of... Games like this where you can never shoot. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Oh, God. You know, when they put guns in Breakout, that's when it got good. I didn't know that there were unlockable games involved in this. I thought they were all just available from the get-go. Alright, you know what? Maybe we can just... Uh, maybe we'll just lose this game of Neo Breakout and, and, uh, and move on. Tough decisions. Who lives and who dies. Yeah, this is, I don't know, this is a good, like, chill kind of remake of, you know, break out the additional rules and stuff are kind of neat. I don't think I'm quite as into it as Quadra Tank, but... Instead, this kind of evokes, like, a specific early era of Xbox Live Arcade, if that makes any sense. Like, before those games, before the Summer of Arcade started, and those games started getting more expensive and more intense... But I do like at the end of the level, it says, Break out! Alright, let's... Let's move on. Suck it, everybody else on this list. Right. And then battle break out of some kind of two player mode. Oh, here we go. Relative absolute sensitivity settings. Okay. So that'd be good for dialing in, you know, dialing in, dialing in your, uh, your spinner controller or something to that effect. Cool. It's cool that these are on the timeline also and not just like kind of shoved in to the the game mode yeah so this here we go warner acquired atari and and then you know sometimes when big companies buy independent things they come in and fuck it all up they didn't play games they told engineering what to do and yeah yeah
Pretty good. Pretty good. After management called them a bunch of high-strung prima donnas, they went and had t-shirts made. Huh. This is an interesting kind of sub video, <laughs> like in the. You will hear stories of hot tubs in the lobby and drug use in the office. And I'm here to tell you that none of that happened in my department. We started smoking pot right in our office. Rob and I were like the premier pot. No, sorry, Rob. Um, I and some other person who occasionally shared an office with me for five years at Atari, however that freaking worked, we would just fire up right in the office. It's like, who knows why? It's like, this is like, it's illegal. It's like, it wasn't even a sense of privilege. It was just mindlessness. I worked in a satellite office. I started in 1977, which was still pretty early. It was only 18 months since the 2600 came out. Uh, but there, were, there was no hot tub in the lobby of the office that I went to. There was no drug use in Atari, though I don't doubt that it was over where Howard and Todd Fry were working. Uh, drugs were consumed at Atari by all kinds of people at all levels of management from the bottom to the top and all over engineering. Not everybody did drugs, and, but uh, some people did and some people enjoyed them and some people abused them, and some people went to the hospital on them. And, uh, but by and large, drugs were a relatively nominal uh, factor. Uh, drugs, you know, there was a lot of marijuana, and it would participated a lot in brainstorming. So we had the way of, you know, trying to incorporate drugs into our productivity model. I went home and I smoked a joint, a little bit of cocaine and a little bit of psilocybin in it. And I was sitting there, it was about half gone when I realized, oh, you could do that. And it's so like, I put it out and I went and I wrote a page of notes. And my design for that kernel was exactly what it ended up, ended up shipping. It was like, it has a tremendous amount of effort, actually, to get everything organized. You know, they, they did have good deliveries of cannabis in the inter-office mail. You know, that was, that was probably the primary use of those, those yellow manila envelopes um so that, i think it was you know fridays or monday i think it was fridays when the you get these really thick envelopes coming through the system <laughs> and, uh, you know there, and there was there was like there was a guy working there and his his job was he was the weed dealer you know that was he didn't really that was his sole job at the whole company and there was a very straight german vp of hardware down the hallway in the building i have no idea um and um, he complained to management about the smell of pot smoke in the corridors. So they got him an office in a different building. <laughs> I, I have been asthmatic since I've been 12. I, <laughs> I need drugs to... I can't smoke hash, need. I'm an asthmatic! I did not do drugs. Because drugs to me were something that let you get up in the morning, you know, and breathe. So I, and, and nor did I think I wanted to mix those things. I, I, the high of me was doing the work. And I was always a happy guy, so I just didn't need, I just didn't feel- That's me. Happy. I'm the so Owen Rubin right. of this. But there were a lot there. Don't put too much stock in the fact that every Atari employee was stoned out of their minds while making games. I mean, there was all kinds of drugs consumed at Atari, but the, the real drug at Atari was going into a store and seeing your product, seeing your game on a shelf. Way to bring it back home. What a cool video. What a fuck. That's fucking great. But they, you know, just kind of let's, let's put the question to these people. Cause uh, yeah, obviously you hear the stories about like, oh, Nolan in the hot tub coked up and like all this stuff, which, you know, that, that probably happened. Um, look at this thing. Look at this ridiculous arcade cabinet. Eight players. This is just in here, huh? What do we got? Uh, A to accelerate, high gear, low gear. All 
All right, I'm catching up. I'm the, I guess that was it, the red car. Oh, oh. Ah. Oh, jerk. Man, talk about AI that sticks to a racing line, huh? really cool this thing is so cool like just going through it in and in, in chronological order seeing the videos looking at the different stuff and then like in the middle of it it's like oh here's a game by the way it's such a cool layout it's such a smart way to do this when you have like the material to back it up right like not every you know not every company's atari not every company has decades and decades of all this legacy and you know like all this stuff but like, man, this is such a cool way to do this. To have all of the, all the stuff, that, again, you know, there's like stuff that would be relegated to like, you know, nine menus deep. Here's a picture of uh, design. Here, here's a picture of the box art. And there you go. Like to just have it all right there. Like this is the right way to do this stuff. But, you know, again, it, it's, I'm sure it's the sort of situation where like you can only really do this with the right company. 50. I'll take it. And yeah, it has multiple tracks, right? Like that's the, let's just say a track select button. Yeah. If I remember correctly. You can hit the track select button while the, let's, let's try it. I think you can hit the track select button while the game is running and really fucking weird. <laughs> oh no, you can't. All right. Ah, uh, what a cool flyer. If you had the right kind of car, it would be cool to get this Sprint 8 logo on the door or something, you know? Basically, if you had a car that looked like that. The hot racing stripe on it. Oh yeah, the Atari, I, I was looking at one of these on eBay not that long ago, the Atari Video Music. So it's a music visualizer. So you pipe the audio through it and then it, I guess, hooks up to a television and then puts weird graphics on the, on the TV. And it's a really, it's just a strange device. <laughs> fire truck. My arcade had a fire truck, and I don't think I... I think maybe once I played it actually two-player. Super bug. Monitor photo shows essence, the French word for fuel. <laughs> Dura stress tested all solid state reliability. Yeah, so at some point they stopped saying that they were built to some mil spec standard on, on the flyers, huh? And then, yeah, fire truck. All right, let's try playing some fire truck. Yep, yeah, that's right. It's got a horn button. Let's go with easy track. Well, we won't have a rear driver. It says I'm sorry for having a score of zero.
But yeah, so the idea would be, you know, you would have to work together with the player in the back who was steering the rear part of the the vehicle. Where's the which button is the horn button? We need to know. B. Oh. It was neat. I you know, like I You forget about like this era of game and and some of this stuff is not the easiest to emulate and and really get a sense for like how cool the cabinet was. So you you know, it's really only when you see like oh, the player 2 was standing up behind the cockpit player with a separate steering wheel to steer the back of the of the fire engine and you had to work in tandem to keep going the right way. It's just a, it's a really crazy idea and you got this cool horn button oh do you ever put out fires ask the chat no it is this is it this is it is you just drive <laughs> I'm just going to keep on crunching. Oh, man. Just lay on this horn. Oh. I'm an ace. I'll take it. 200 points bonus for 270. Nice. And then, yeah, here's Super Breakout, which had like a button select kind of thing um, for, for the different modes. Progressive Breakout and Cavity Breakout and Double Breakout. So I think we can just, oh, it's right there. Uh, game select. So you can, well, I guess it always has the balls in the middle there. If you just pick progressive or I forget what cavity breakout was. I was just on that screen. Oh, cavity had the trap balls and then progressive mode was what made the bricks dip down. Let's, you know. We played some Breakout earlier. We don't necessarily... Oh, man. Yeah. That's good. Hot logos. Oh, yeah. Vector Sector. Yeah, I want to... We'll, we'll try Lunar Lander out here real quick. The Exploratorium had a Lunar Lander machine. Like... Like it was science. Oh, you can turn the glow up and down on the vector. That's cool. Um, okay, what controls are we working with here? Throttle. Okay, yeah, analog stick for throttle, or analog trigger, rather. And then your abort thrusters. Let's try and hit that 5X if we can get it. So in the arcade, the the thrust was on like it was like a like a T bar kind of throttle up and down kind of thing, and so an analog stick is a little different because it's very you know it always defaults to being cut off. Okay, coming in a little hot. 
Okay, we're mostly straight on. Oh, no, wait, wait. We're not quite. Uh... You landed hard. Life support is gone. <laughs> 75 points. Oh, now they're all the way over there. Okay. We're going to need to... Spend a little fuel to get over there. Low on fuel, add coins. Yeah, I bet. Devious. Get our horizontal speed down. Hey! Right, let's try that five, five X again. I don't know what the smart fuel strategy is if it's to like wait until it late and then really burn a lot because you're not really using any when you're just floating or small adjustments are a smarter fuel strategy. I just never knew that. I do know we got to slow up here. Coming in too hot. Okay. Lined up pretty good. Oh, God. <laughs> Pretty low on fuel here. This is a... Uh, this might be a dire situation. It's fine. We're fine. This is going to be fine. Oh. Oh. Uh-oh. Also, rotating takes a little bit of fuel, too. So you see my fuel ticking down as I'm, like, frantically figuring out what I'm going to do here. I'm going to got to slow that horizontal speed. Honestly, I'm going for this one because it just seems like it's the closest one. Uh, uh, ah, out of fuel. It'll be fine. We died in space. It's always how it goes, though. I was always fucking terrible in <laughs> Lunar Lander. Uh, all right, let's see this. This is... The video of this I saw seemed... cool as hell. Oh man. Do the space dual dual ship thing. Let's let's try that at first. Okay, so 
you tell it's a modern game because that's a tutorial instead of a manual. Okay, so that'll turn you in addition to... Wait, so I can... If I boost left and shoot right... Are the, oh, the sh are the shots? No. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> it's just like... I can move in any direction and shoot in any direction. It's a dual joystick shooter. Oh, it resized? Oh, that's weird. Huh. Well, why'd it do that? This game only goes to 1080p. Oh, that's... You can... Oh, man. You can do it Crimson Land style also. Um... Well, heck, uh, let's just, I guess, blow it up bigger. I don't, I don't know how we're going to do this. This is weird. Hmm. What's going to be the right way to make this work? Well, the corner of the screen is still the corner of the screen, but we do need to make it bigger. We want that how to play to basically be bottom center of the screen. Um, let's do it manually. No, that's going to screw it all up. Uh, huh. Huh. Hang on. I'm completely screwing up my layout here. Let's lock the... Hang on a sec. Sorry. Uh, we'll lock that one down. This is the one... Right? Okay. We don't want to lock that one. We want to lock all these other graphics so that I don't move them around inadvertently. And now the only thing I can move is this. Okay. Let's just keep scaling it up, I guess, until we can... It's also very dim here in a way it's not on my screen, which is unfortunate. And seemingly no options. Darn. Well, let's... Yeah, this... I believe you are at least seeing the full game screen, but it is much brighter on my screen here. That's a weird, I don't know what, I wonder what it's doing there. Resolution, what? oh man. Oh, and then now I have a fuel meter on top of that. What, I, hmm. fire forward here but the the right analog stick still does the firing this would have been a cool like bonus level in I wonder like there's kind of you know obviously they couldn't put Star Wars in this but there's kind of a vague this just feels like it's somewhere halfway between Battlezone and Star Wars. Uh, what are we doing? Okay. All right. Let's go. Yeah, this looks a lot better. Okay. All right. So here's your... Some Tempest for that ass. Ah. Oh, man. Hmm. 
Yeah, I wonder why that's showing at such a strange resolution. Because this is, yeah, it's still full screen. It's it's a, in a, a much brighter view than uh, than what you're seeing. I don't know why that's doing that. I wonder if I could change. I mean, let's. That's more what it looks like if I switch to window capture instead of full screen. Well, let's take this full screen capture and change it back to fit to screen. And then there, I can play another one like this. That's a weird thing. I don't know. Let's make this even harder. All right. Okay. So they both. So only one ship thrusts, but they both fire. And they both get shielded. Okay. Oh, it's it's not actually moving, is it? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> That's funny. It only moves when okay. So if I if I actually put the window in Well, whatever. Alright. Vector sector a little janky in OBS, looks like, but. Oh man, ah, that. Yeah, this is much harder. So I have to land two ships in a lunar land? This is... Jeez. This might be better suited for a two-player sort of... Okay, let's put it down there now. Not so bad. I'm afraid to actually hit my shots on these things I'm, since I'm dragging this other ship around. Ugh. Okay. Uh-oh. That's pretty cool. It's uh, not easy. Especially with the, the double ship like that. Um, all right, let's play one more solo. Maybe if I use the shield from time to time. Let's go for this times three over here. Getting all cocky, who's just boosting in. that it bounces you off them. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, let's see if we can handle this Tempest part this time around. Oh, that just bounced. That didn't... Okay, so I can kind of kill him like that. Not a full-on super zapper, but actually probably better than a super zapper. Oh, I'm scared to get over there and do this. All right, there we go. All right, wave two. That's good. That's really neat. Let's go back to the other capture method because it'll probably just be cleaner across the board. Oh, we have the handheld touch me. I had one of these. I uh, got like as a hand me down. See, Atari touch me at the Knickerbocker Toy Company. Touch me, as they say. Oh, yeah, I remember seeing... I remember wanting one of these and never... Oh, man, this is... Space Age Sounds! No, this wasn't released. What am I thinking of? Well, maybe they showed it... I I remember something like this. But yeah, okay. So it never came out. And then Space Invaders was also announced in Kansas. I mean, it kind of looks like a... Um, what is it? A microvision or whatever? Oh, yeah. Here's just... Good-ass... Version of that cool art. Knob control... And then we get into asteroids, which that's this, this asteroids logo is so good. Always was. Originally being developed as a raster game called Planet Grab. But claim more planets than your opponent. Weird. 
I did not know that. And then Missile Command. T-shirt art used on the official T-shirt. You know, you could just... Uh... This is... And this is such a great picture also. That silly-ass helmet. Oh, and they did the little ones, too. The tiny cabinets, yeah. Cabarets. Yeah, here's a cabaret for asteroids also. Look at these tiny little guys. And I, yeah, this thing it was like a hologram thing. Okay, so we got a video about the holograms and... Now with Cosmos and Holoptics. Oh, neat. Huh. All right, well, why don't we play some games? I don't want to go through every little bit of source material here. You know, you should pick up the collection if you want to check it out. Um, they made Sword Quest Air World. The Sword Quest games are... I, I, I never understood what you were supposed to do in any of these games. But this was supposed to be four games. One based on each element. And then there was supposed to be some kind of huge prize... If you beat all four of them or something, and it was meant to be this whole big mystery across four games, and they were all terrible. <laughs> oh, that's right. This is the uh, Yar's Revenge reimagined. I need to know. Okay. Can I not touch the thing? Okay, no, we can. Okay. Oh, okay. I just couldn't see the. So that thing chases you down. All right. So, still pretty similar to Yar's Revenge. That thing slowly chases you. The base on the other side there will eventually shoot that ball out. We need to go touch it to arm the missile, and then we hit the button to try to fire it, and then we do that. You know, Yar's Revenge. Oh, that fired faster than I was anticipating. All right, we got to get a weird, away from this weird space bone fish. Which was just a dash, a horizontal line in the original game. We've got to smash the, the coteal. Quote, coteal? They did a Yars Revenge. They tried to do a Yars Revenge game that was like a shitty rail shooter as a downloadable game for like PS3 and Xbox 360. It is uh, not good. All right, I'm gonna let this guy shoot one more thing and then we'll try to go do our business. Boom. When I'm in this center area here, you can't shoot. So you kind of have to either be far away or up close. 
Oh, oh. You don't want to get hit by your own missile thing. Okay, let's try that. Nope. Miss. Ah, oh, come on. What? That seemed... There. And it just goes between these two level types until you're done. <laughs> just like the original game. Oops. I mean, all you really got to do is clear a path. You don't have to destroy the whole thing. You just got to do that. start a new game? I might have. This just feels like Yar's Revenge. Yeah, I, I think I did start a new game. Um, oh, I mean, in fact, it is just the instructions for the original Yar's Revenge when you call it up, so yeah. I never understood the game Haunted House. Ghost level, spooky specter, dark spirit, ghost hunter, ghost rush. Graves Academy, creepy cabin. Ernie, okay. Oh, weird. $10 to light a torch. <laughs> Only see them if the torch is lit. Okay. The Scepter Scroll of Protection makes creatures and ghosts ignore you. That seems useful. carry that for now. Only carry one item at once. Okay. All right. Use those giant peepers and look around for the skeleton key. <laughs> Now we got the key. Let this elevator lift your spirits to the next floor. Okay, elevator up. Keep carefully or the ghost will steal one of your lives. Yeah, that's right. Get too close to the ghost till okay. I'll snuff out your torch. I 
I guess it might be useful to see. Oh, 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 that's bad. Okay. We did the thing. Urn. Deaths. Device. Multiple mansions. This is neat. So I think that's all the, well, there's also, let's, let's see this. Is there a manual? Oh, what's enhanced mode? All right, explore 64 chambers, each based on a hexagram of the ancient Ch the I Ching, sure. Figure two reveals the layout of the hexagrams in the rooms of Airworld, and figure three offers an interpretation of their cryptic wisdom. A lot of weird items. a colorful clue is discovered write it down keep a log of everything the solution will become clear boy yeah this is the sword quest i know dude walking around a bunch of rooms and then you hit the button and then i guess there's items we can pick them up if we so choose what do they do i have no idea there's another thing. Let's pick that up. I don't know. Oh, I hit that button and now we've got some kind of mini game. It's like a backwards uh, flappy bird. Did I do the thing by touching the ball? I don't know. There's more items here. We can drop some of our stuff here and leave it here I guess so like that's how the inventory works you push A to see what's in the room and or you push the button because it's an Atari game and then sometimes when you push the button there's a, a mini game of some sort oh geez I feel like by having a map in the lower left corner this game goes further than any of the other sword quest games and kind of holding your hand <laughs> Um, but yeah, you know, I, so I never had the manual to, I, I, like I had two of the sword quest games, but never had any of the manuals for them. And so just none of it made any sense. You're just like walking around going like, I don't, do I need the second controller? Like Raiders of the Lost Ark. That, that would have been another good game to be in here. Actually Raiders of the Lost Ark licenses. What are you going to do? Right. Um, I've oh, got Aka R. So this, this game leaked out not that long ago. Um, it's a prototype that had been, it, it showed up, I think at California extreme here and there. And then at some point the ROMs just showed up online and now it works in MAME. Oh, I don't want to advance. Which button is the power blaster? Okay. All right, so I'm shooting, blasting out of the center. Things are crawling in to get me. It's the sort of game that you're like, yeah, I can see why this game never, maybe never made it out of the prototype stage.
Oh, we gotta zoom in and gotta do dirt up close. Get out of here. Oh, geez. Stop doing that. Are these things hatching into something? Ah, step off, get away from me. Power blaster do? Let's find out. Not enough. Is there still okay no it's still Okay now he's out there. Go Go away. Leave me alone. Alright. Yeah, a trackball. It would, be, it would be cool to have a track. I don't have a trackball currently. Ah! Dusted. Man, guy just fucking cruised in there. No, no. All right. This was a good time to use that power blaster. Easy. It's weird that it has a lives lost tracker. I wonder, you know, if it was just the situation of like the because the ROMs to this leaked out, if that's why it's now showing up in some other things, or if this would have been on the table regardless, because, you know, conceivably it would be something Atari owns, but at the same time, it would be something that Atari might not be in actual possession of without some of those ROMs leaking out, if you know what I mean? So Oh, there's a lot of oh, this is a lot of I, these these good things probably are bad for me, I'm guessing. If I let them fill up and explode, I should probably, well, that was the wrong button to hit there, but. Oh, they all just got in and they're in here and they're in here and, okay.
Man. <laughs> Oh, I see. These things act. These things block your shots, so it just makes it harder for you to get your shots out. I see. I was like wondering, do those things hatch into new enemies or something, or what's the? Oh man. Oh no. Maybe they do both. Ah. Wrong button, but but okay. I zapped him. I gave him the zap. Are right, these fuckers just come straight in? So if I can just lead the targets appropriately, I can stop them from putting more weird shit in here. They're building something, and I don't like it. Not going well for me. I gotta kill these things and these things. Too many things. Mmm. Somehow. Oh, they all just, they're just like, hey, we're here now. We're coming all the way in. Nothing you can do about it. I feel like I want to try to clear out my area, but then... It gave me like three seconds to get in there and just like shoot my stuff around my base, you know? I feel like I'm just like pulling, staying just ahead of like occasionally getting enough uh, extra lives here to stay afloat, but no. Not with that. Not with that going on. Oh, fuck off. Wouldn't mind have seen in uh, online leaderboards for some of this stuff, I suppose.
Ah, this is going bad. All right. So I think that's it in terms of just like the the truly weird stuff like a lot of it and then and the rest of the game collection is is mostly stuff that's been out let's just go through it and look here because I'm not even 100% sure what's in it so we got asteroids of course asteroids deluxe black widow is a decent little dual joystick shooter breakout centipede another trackball game you know a mouse would be okay cloak and oh man Cloak and Daggers. I hope that there's good uh, documentary stuff backing, like talking about Cloak and Dagger. I, oh, I love this game. As a longtime lover of dual joystick shooters. Right trigger to ignite fuse. Okay. Yeah, we'll just, we'll start at the, we'll start at the start. Oh, this game is so good. Dr. Boom. We gotta get part of the minefield map. Oh, you can't use the... I was hoping you could use the D-pad and, and face buttons as like a makeshift dual joystick. Because, you know, it's not an analog game, right? You kind of... We'll pick up this stuff here and then we'll light the igniter and then run like hell. All these little animations for when you... And you see the, the level blowing up as you escape it. But all these little animations in the elevator are so good. audio on this seems a little weird to me, but let's get that X. That's an extra life. We'll get the part of the map. We'll just collect some of these things to get them out of the way here and then light the fuse and fucking run. We'll wait around. Ah! So this game was originally in development uh, under the name Agent X, and then I guess when the movie came along... They ended up renaming it, but like the plot of the game is not really the plot of the movie, you know, the, and if you've seen the movie, you know, the, like the role of the game in the movie is not like the, this game exists in the plot of the film. You know what I mean? It's not like the, the film is necessarily like a, okay. If you wait too long, it ignites itself. Yeah, just something about the grind of the elevator and some of the other stuff just sounds a little off to me. I don't know. All right, so we collected all the parts of the minefield map, so now we get these arrows that will guide us through. You can skip those if you so desire. Like, you don't have to get them. Okay, let's uh, light that fuse and fucking run. And so you have to go all the way down to the bottom, collect some secret plans, and then work your way all the way back up. And, and here's this big creepy eye monster. I seem to remember, is it here? There is some sort, occasionally you'll find a bonus item or something like just in the... Okay, we gotta go. Oh, I just lit the fuse again too. This is too much, this is too much, too much, too much. The eye monster can be killed. Oh no. Okay, we got plenty of time. So the other thing you can do is, uh, well, I guess we can't. Maybe we can do it on the next set of levels.
is I can hold down both sticks and it'll express me to the next minefield level. So that means you won't have the full map for the minefield, but you can skip levels if you so if you so choose. So so here we don't have the we don't have the map that leads us through this part of the minefield, but we made it to the map. So. So we can just be like, fuck it, and I think, do we have to go through the first level? Or I'll, I'll hold down and see if it'll go. Yeah, there we go. Such a great movie. What is Dabney Coleman's finest film work? Is it Cloak and Dagger or is it Dragnet? I can't say. There's Dr. Boom. And you see the mines do occasionally kind of show up, so you... Oh, man. So you can kind of get a sense of where they might be. And when you get close to them, they show up as well, so you kind of... You can still kind of inch your way through the level. And you get decent bonus points for taking the express elevator and skipping a bunch of levels. I don't know what works out better. I love the film Dragnet. I, that's one of those things. Tom Hanks, you know, when he's given interviews, he's talked about how much he is embarrassed of the film Dragnet. But as far as I'm concerned, it's a goddamn classic. Oh, I got blown up somehow. What? Oh, they're shooting from all the way across the level. That's what it is. All right, we'll ride this one all the way around. Then we'll ride this one around. Then we'll ride this one around. Uh-oh. Oh, we'll make it. We'll make it. It's okay. I want to say it goes down to level 33? Yeah, something about the sound on this elevator sounds weird to me. Is the, so Okay, these things will reflect your shots, which is... Oh, no, maybe they won't. What am I thinking of? There are, like... I think there's, like, forklifts later on that will reflect your shots, and it's a big pain in the ass. Where's the... Oh, uh, there it is. Oh, we gotta go. Oh, man. Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, there's something about the sound of this elevator that sounds a little off to me, but, you know, that's... At this point, I'm comparing it to, like, my memory of MAME probably more than the real cabinet. Oh, Jesus. So, who's to say what's right and wrong at that point? I'm gonna say they probably... did their research, but, but yeah. This is a... a I, I love this game. I love this game. It's so good. The movie, so good. The Atari 5200 cart. At the plot of this, at the, at the key to the plot of this movie. Even though they never released this game on the 5200. Crystal Castle is also awesome, but um, it's a trackball game. And so it's, it's, it's one of those things that's always not... It's, it's, it's just... It's good and, and all that stuff, but never, not super easy to play. It's just, it, the trackball offers a fine level of control that I feel like the mouse doesn't really give you either. Oh, geez. I just, okay. Well, I was over here messing with controllers and maybe we won't warp to level three next time, huh? Like even just getting on that, um... 
getting on these little ramps and elevators and stuff, just like any kind of precision is really hard. Oh, Bentley Bear. Well, because we warped and did a bunch of other stuff, we got the high score anyway. Did I just get murdered by a tree? Yeah, I got murdered by a tree. This is Crystal Castles. There's multiple warps, so like, yeah, you can just the you can just walk back here and just jump and then warp to level three. And then what is it here? I think you maybe you have to have the hat on for this next one, but maybe it's there's this little secret path back here. Maybe if you get the hat and come back here and hit it, then you warp. I forget what it is. Oh, I did not want to. And the bees come for you. And it, yeah, it, it's, you know, with a trackball, I think this is a classic, but without one, it's always kind of disappointing. And... When we get the, the wizard's hat, we are invincible for a brief period of time. When you jump over enemies, they stop moving for a minute. You see that tree keeps shrinking when I jump over it, as a, tr as a tree would. And you just have to get all the gems. And they also eat the gems, so sometimes they will eat the last gem, and no one likes that. forget what the right way to eat the, the get the honey is like if you want to get it late and not get it immediately because the bees will go to the honey if the honey is still there but if the bees show up and the honey's not there it comes after you if I remember right but okay Ugh, yeah yeah it's just you know you want a trackball you want a trackball Okay, let's go over here. Oh, oh, come on. It's just hard to line this, some of this stuff up. Oh, I thought that was going to be it. Is there more? Where are the rest of them? Where are the rest of the gems? I don't see... Oh, it's under the hat. Ah. Uh. Credits. I don't remember ever seeing these before. I don't remember ever seeing the credits before. That's weird, but cool. But yeah, it, it, the reason you move so fast is because it's, it's expecting you to have a trackball and the analog controller approximates it in a decent fashion, but it's not, it's not ideal. We played fire truck, food fight. Look, man, Charlie Chuck is a video game icon. Look at this motherfucker. Uh, we're, look at Charlie Chuck. This game used uh, 49 way sticks, I believe, in the arcade to... Or a four, one 49 way stick. It's not a dual joystick game. It's a single joystick and a button. And we get to the food. We have to remember in the 80s, one of the ideal scenarios you could ever find... Your, ah! One of the ideal scenarios you could find yourself in a thing you were constantly striving for as a child was to find a way to get into a food fight. Everyone wanted to be involved in a food fight in one way or another. We all spent every day wondering, will this be the day that I somehow find myself in a food fight? And will I be ready? You know, who's going to put together a hundred cream pies to have a food fight? I I, I still want to be at a food fight. Not at these prices, but... Is this a watermelon level? Yeah, okay. Watermelons, much like in real life, are infinite.
All right, we gotta go. Gotta get that ice cream before it melts. It's the fault of Animal House, the film. National Lampoon's Animal House, I believe, is why food fights became such a desirable thing in the 80s. Uh, and I think, you know, some kids' movies or kids' media somewhere along the way, because probably because of the influence of Animal House. Um, yeah, Blazing Saddle. Okay, yeah. I, I, I think... I think Animal House is kind of the definitive reason you talk about a food fight, but... And of course, yes, that's that Three Stooges... That Three Stooges pie fight uh, immortalized in the Three Stooges video game. The beans are like a shotgun blast. They don't have the range of the other foods. I level up and get gold camo on these beans. Oh. I should check. These games have dip switch settings and stuff? It seems like I... Huh. I guess they don't. That seems weird. I mean, I assume Food Fight had some kind of difficulty style dip switch settings. I'd have to look. You know, because who cares if it, if it's just coin like make it make it fifty cents to play it like you know then then whatever but yeah let's yeah let's see that again look at this look at what I just did marvel upon this upon Charlie Chuck's dominance. Of these devilish chefs. Chefs. I like that you carry a piece of food forward with you. This is just an... Food Fight is such an awesome game. God. I want to fall in the holes. You uh, you can fall in the holes also. And this is a game that I, I also feel like never really got a good home version because of that 49 way stick. This this feels really good on the analog stick. Oh, oh. Oh, man. Oh, God. Okay. Yep. Gonna line that up to enter your name. Yeah, this is, yeah. Food fight, man. It's the real deal. Yeah, I guess I, yeah, I, I'm kind of surprised it doesn't have, I mean, there's nothing, okay, game options. No, that's this, that's this screen. Hmm. hmm. Gravatar is pretty good. iRobot is, is a good, weird. This is a good, weird game. Uh, of course, the Will Smith film based upon this video game. Everyone knows that. Uh, not a lot of polygonal stuff in 1983. We'll do iRobot the game, and then maybe later we'll play Doodle City the Ungame. Okay, so we can't jump when the eye is open. No jumps to shield. Okay, let's get over here. 
We need to touch all the red stuff. I open, don't jump. Okay, and now we can now we can jump to the eye and blow it up automatically, and then we go. So basically, you have to go around and, and color in all the red thing, and then and now we and now we shoot stuff for a while. I shot all the Tetras. That's right. Can you see him? Oh! Mm. The eye was red. You understand. Oh, eyes open. Okay, we're good. Ah, ah, we're fine. We're good. Okay. My daughter's staring at me through the window. They just got home. Uh, I entered the, the... I don't know where... Okay. I don't know where the transporter goes. Let's go to level five. Let's go to level five. Okay. And also when you jump, it... Um, oh, oh, hold up. Oh, okay. We don't want to get paid by the big balls, I guess, too. That's a lot to worry about. Mm. Oh yeah, the start buttons change view. The lower you play, the higher your your score. So you can yeah, if you play from like a view where you don't see the rest as much of the world, I guess you get more points. iRobot's a good example of a really weird ass game that I think a lot of people just never understood how to play it. Hi, how you doing? Did you have fun? Um, and then also you could put in a quarter and play Doodle City instead. And it just gives you three minutes of... Of making cool stuff. And I guess I don't... Okay, it's giving me guess some of the options. So I can make them spin. Let's pick a different object to paint with. And make it spin. And now we'll change it. Oh, we didn't want to clear. I don't want to clear everything. But oh, okay, well. We can do this. Nice. We can make it spin so we can make some cool circles, man. And so if you wanted to just put a quarter in and do this for three minutes, you could. Which, when you think about it, is really fucking crazy. Let's make this one spin. We'll make another cool ball over here. We'll move up here and do one up here. Yeah. We'll move this one to make some kind of shaft type thing that kind of spreads off of these two spheres down here at the bottom, I guess. Yeah. Let me even put some trees in the nice little. Oh, the eye itself. Yeah, 
Yeah, man. So yeah, they saw Doodle City and said, we need to make a movie out of this years later. And, uh, you know, and the Will Smith film was based on this mode of, of the game. Not a lot of people know that. I'm sure it's in the documentary footage. I'm sure that they, in, in their interviews, they would have had, I'm sure they probably have Will Smith in there talking about it, honestly. We got rainbow balls. Yeah, man. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I can if I if I want to if I want to put in another quarter to get another three minutes making my picture, you could do that. But it's just such a like. I, yeah, I don't know. It's, I, I uh, wish well, we can look. Zoom out. So, you know, it, it wants you to have access to the player two start button to do some of this stuff, I guess. And because you're supposed to hit both starts to do something special. I forget what that is, but. But yeah, I don't know. Um, 1984. Hell of a year. Liberator, I it's it's kind of a missile command esque sort of thing, I guess. But it's not great. And right, it's got the art kind of from the weird comic books they were doing. So it's kind of like a, you know, missile command from a different perspective in a way, I guess. It's supposed to be like a, there. It is. It's like a flickering spot on the there. Ah, okay. It didn't hit us. Hit us at least. Bop, 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 bop. What an ugly image! That graphic right there. It's real terrible. Ah! Mm. I, Liberator's not a good game. Lunar Lander will play. Major Havoc is a really cool game, but it had a... a paddle controller and some buttons and all that. Like, it's, it's such a... And so we're playing Breakout over here in the bottom right corner while, you know, while we're waiting to get to the base and... I think you can warp, you can like skip levels if you play Breakout the right way or something. Ah, some of this audio seems weird to me. But I, yeah, again, you know. A lifetime of loud arcades and emulators and stuff makes it hard always to say like, oh, this audio is accurate or not without going and doing the comparison. All right, so now we're in the base. Picking up some oxygen. We're jumping. We're going over here. We accidentally fell too far here. We want to jump and then let off the button and then get in there. Hit that button. Now we want to get the hell out of here. As long as we hold down the jump button, we'll go up. But if we hit our head, 
he'll bonk and then have to fall down and you'll lose some time on the way out. But yeah, this is a really ambitious, crazy vector arcade game for its day, uh, and... And it's pretty awesome. I guess it had a... There were different versions of the, the different cabinets that had different controllers, but it had a... It wasn't quite a paddle controller. It was something you could analog move left and right, but it was like a barrel, and you would spin it to the side. It was a weird little device, but really neat. Okay. The arrows are here to point us in the right direction. Let's not hit that. Let's go this way. Okay, we need to get over here. We need to jump up and go over and then down and then over this and then hit the button. Oh, okay, that was close. All right, we need to not hit that. Uh, we need to go over and... Oh, no, okay, okay, all right. This way, we've got plenty of oxygen, plenty of time. Everything's fine. We're good. Fuck this base. Die. I hope everyone dies. Die screaming in space, assholes! That's right! Okay, okay, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. Bring it in. Ah! That's a good effect when you die there, too. It's turned into a damn skeleton. Use shields to destroy one robot or fireball. I don't, oh, I do have shields, okay, I do have shields. Okay, we need to... Okay, yeah, we don't want to fall into that. Oh, man! I should have hit the shield, but I didn't hit the shield. Good game. Good game, Major Havoc. Good game. Oh, here's a proto... Maze Invaders. Okay. Right. Okay. This is, yeah, this is in MAME, I believe. Uh, select starting maze. Push button to start. Let's go to maze four, I guess. Not much of a maze. But a jaunty little tune. Watermelon in Maze 10. Oh, we went to Maze 3, huh? I like its cool little music. I cannot shoot those. I guess I can... Well, I guess it, it delayed and moved them around a little bit, but... I bet this... Oh, jeez. Okay. This guy over here seems like something I could shoot, though. Yeah. Let's go this way, I guess. So I wonder if this map on the cabinet is actually... Is it, is that would mean this would be maze six. Yeah. Jaunty little tune. Uh, 
I guess this goes to maze five then. Well, we can go down and go to maze eight out of this one. If the, if the marquee is correct. And then we can go left out of maze eight if we make it to get that watermelon I've heard so much about. In honor of the original watermelon comedian. We got our ladybug style little doors here. What did I want to do here out of Maze 5? Go down. Right. I was like, wait, what was that? My plan was all in place, and then... left. Oh, there's this over here. This way. Oh, come on! Okay, I made it. Hmm, that didn't go as I'd hoped. Mousetrap. Yeah, Mousetrap's a great arcade game. Uh, the buttons were so cool for the colored doors you could open and close, just these big buttons you could just mash. And the dog button was shaped like a bone, and it lit up. This is not a great game. Let's move on. Millipede, classic. You know, these trackball games. I had a Missile Command machine for a while. I wrote the foreword to Alex Rubens's Missile Command book. Um, which is a fun read. Um, And I do like Missile Command quite a bit, but, you know, again, without a trackball, Quantum. What was Quantum? A high scoring place that gets to sign their name using the trackball controller, right? <coughs> oh, this is, so this is, uh, you know, much like Sonic Frontiers, uh, we have to do a Psy loop around stuff. Right, I guess the strategy is to get all the balls at once, huh? Ooh. Ran right into that thing. This is a neat idea. Oh, man. Ouch. Oh, I have to... Okay. Yeah, see, if I got the top score, I could try to write my name. You're saying Zookeeper is better than Food Fight, huh? Doing a dame. I, you know, I may very well agree with you there. I love Food Fight, but I love Zookeeper. Space Duel is cool. Uh, it's like a, you know, kind of an update on the asteroids formula with new stuff to shoot and oh man this this is this collection should have had blasteroids in it and this is where the weird linked ship thing comes from i 
Wait, how do, what are my buttons here? Okay. Ah! So when you're playing two player, the coordinating, the, the coordinating thrust and stuff like that is just a really neat idea. But yeah, this game had some cool, uh, you know, instead of just the standard asteroid stuff, having this kind of, you know, these 3D-ish sort of things, little stars you gotta hit multiple times to, to finally blow up. Ah! Mm, oh, ah. Our guy got hit, but he's still there. Oh, but now we're both dead! Ah! Yeah, that's neat. That's a neat game. Sprint 8 we played. A little Tempest, you know. Like, I guess it'd be kind of cool. I don't know. It's it's maybe a little, you know, maybe you don't need it for the museum concept to work. But, like, there were multiple revisions of Tempest. And one of them had a weird bug in it where if you got... You had to play... You had to be really good at the game to do any of it. So it's kind of weird. But, like... If you got a score between a certain number and another certain number, the last two digits of your score would determine some kind of almost like debug style effect. And you could set it so the game could be played in attract mode. And you could like give yourself free credits and all, you know, like, like all this different stuff. And they issued a later revision that took all that stuff out. These vectors look really good for, you know, emulated uh, vector graphics. Nice looking stuff. Good wobble on them. But yeah, you know, this, this, I feel like there's a bunch of additional weird detail you could get into that would just kind of complicate matters, but would be nice to see, I guess, and, and stuff like that. Like, hey, you want to play like the Spanish version of Tempest or, you know, or whatever. Um, Warlords, an all-time classic. I'm surprised this doesn't have the right stick quick move that uh that breakout did. If uh there was ever a reason to buy four spinner controllers for a PC, which I don't I, I don't even know if you could configure this game to work with them. Um but that would be worth trying out. I always thought Warlords was a cool game, but I never really considered it uh, to be the sort of game you could play for money until um, until I went to California Extreme and you know fell in with a rough crowd, and then suddenly found myself owning my own Warlords machine. That said, rough crowd gave me a, a, a sold to me for quite a quite a good price. Um, I no longer have that Warlord's machine. I just wasn't getting a lot of use out of it. It was the thought of like, um, you know, eventually my kids are going to get old enough that there, there will, will be four of us in the house and we could play Warlords, but that's so many years away and I was moving and all the stuff. I was like, you know what? I don't, I don't, it was sad to see the Warlord's machine in my garage with just a bunch of stuff sitting on top of it, you know, and and so I was like, you know, I just, I, I felt like I had to get this Warlord's machine back out into the world where hopefully it is being enjoyed. Um, and, and hopefully people are playing it for money, <laughs> all money and all that sort of stuff. Um, I'm going to die. I died. But this is still an awesome game, and um, yeah, like I said, it'd be interesting to see what kind of controller support you can get out of this in 
in terms of, you know, can you hook up four mice? Stick settings. Okay. Okay. Invert and all the, all right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you, yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is remap. Remap controls. It looks like you can't remap the analog sticks. But stick settings. I mean, they definitely uh, seem to be accounting for you to have four controllers set up. But I wonder, you know, you could always 3D print the spinner controller and, and see how that works. But hmm. 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 But yeah, I want to hook, uh, you know, if you, if you were not here earlier, I, w I would love to be able to hook this. This is a USB spinner controller with a couple of buttons and some buttons on the sides to map to whatever you need um, that I bought primarily for use with the Mr. But it hooks up great to the PC if you're using MAME or something like that and you want to play Super Sprint or any kind of driving game. Like, it works great for that. Um, and um, it's got a nice heft to it. This, this is uh, who, how to find the spinner controller. Who the hell did I buy this thing from? It might be ultimatemister.com. I forget. I forget who was making these in the community. Um, but yeah, someone was out there making and selling these things. They've got a, you could knock somebody out with this thing. You could club somebody real good with this thing. It's got a, a good weight to it. Yes. It's from Portugal. Yes, I got this shipped to me from Portugal. That is correct. Um, and I, yeah, I, I won't do it here on the stream because we got a lot of games we're going to go through, but I think that's going to be one of my next moves is hooking that thing up and seeing what I can get away with here. 3D tic-tac-toe is real. So, okay, so that's the arcade stuff. What do we think about the arcade stuff? You know, is the, the thing to remember is that at Atari... Atari got split into two companies and the IP got split across um, multiple companies. And so Warner Brothers, as I understand it, owns a good chunk of what we think of as the Atari IP. Past a certain date, the 720s of the world and uh, APB and a lot of that more late model, probably Primal Rage, I guess, would probably be theirs as well. Um, so the, the Atari... Yeah, so so all that stuff got split, and so they can only go so far with this stuff without then also having to do a deal with Warner Brothers, and that's, you know, it's kind of a different thing at that point. Um, but, you know, I... I think of Battlezone as being a pretty iconic Atari game from this era. I'd also say the same thing about Red Baron... But at the same time, I don't know that those would be like awesome fun to go back to. So I, I don't know that I'm necessarily missing them here. I would much rather have the... Oh, yeah, the Atari sold Battlezone. That's right. So, yeah, that's right. They've been selling off IPs and doing other stuff with it, huh? So, yeah, I you know, I don't... Yeah, and, and maybe Red Baron is a cryptocurrency at this point now. Who knows? Atari's been a weird company for a good long time. Um... But yeah, this is a, this is a good this is a solid list. I would want yeah, Major Havoc I think is a is a great inclusion. iRobot is a good weird one. Like that's some, I'm I'm glad to see it here because no one not enough people are talking about iRobot. Food Fight a must have. Cloak and Dagger awesome. That's one of those things I was like, "Oh, would that be a weird licensing deal or whatever that they would have to do?" But maybe not, but you know, when was the last time Cloak and Dagger was re-released in any kind of collection? I can't remember. But I, I love this game. I love, love, love this game. I was nine when this game came out. Um, just so cool. I, I, you know, I love dual joystick shooters, like period. And and but like Cloak and Dagger, with its cool explosions and the elevator and all that sort of stuff. And you know, the movie only helped my love for that game. I think. Um. Like, the, yeah, I feel like the, the arcade choices are good and weird. You know, you got Maze Invaders and Aka R is kind of like, you know, you're, oh, hey, you've probably never seen this before. Unless you have a full MAME install on your computer. Um, 
Blasteroids would have been a good one, but I wonder if that's too late, if that's something that ends up being owned on the other side of the IP stuff. But that was kind of like another another take on it is similar concepts to space duel you could change between three different types of ships big small and medium and um and it had an ending and a boss fight and all this other stuff it's a cool game dmil 103 says smash tv and robotron 2084 are my favorite arcade games ever would love a cabinet of either yeah i have a smash tv cabinet and uh i wish that it was in a position like somewhere where i could play it more frequently i need to do some serious garage cleanup. Um, I love, I love Smash TV. On some days, if you ask me what's your favorite game, I might just answer Smash TV. I don't know. Um, please, yeah, okay, yes, okay, yeah, please, uh, yes, please do not make fun of iRobot this Christmas. Please do not make fun of Doodle City this Christmas. It's important. Please. Reminds me, my Comedy Bang Bang subscription is probably about to renew, isn't it? Let's play Adventure. Okay, so you pick your... Oh, interesting. That's nice. That's nice that this is a good way. So the Atari 2600, if you remember correctly, or if you don't, it had a bunch of switches and fucking buttons on it, and it just said, like, do you want to play game one or game two? And you're like, I don't know what any of this is. I gotta... I gotta, you know, dig it up and look... And so here they take those game variants and just let you set the difficulty switches and all that sort of stuff. I'm a master of uh, Adventures Game 1. Oh, uh, we, we went the wrong way. Except uh, I'm not a master anymore. This is non-optimal because I needed to kill that dragon first. We don't need the sword anymore. But we do need this black key. Mm -hmm. Nope, wrong. Over here, over here. The bridge is already here, so we can just go through there. Open that up. Don't need the black key anymore. Get the chalice, go back. Go over here. And we win. I can't do that with game two. <laughs> with the weird invisible maze and all that other stuff. So. So, yeah. Good full manual in color, all that stuff. That's nice. Good magic. Good or bad magic. Bad magic. Uh, my understanding is that you can still do the weird trick in this game to uh, reveal the hidden Easter egg. Yeah, well, well, Warren Robinette's name hidden in the game, which I did do once, years, years, years ago. Air Sea Battle, good game. A lot of these games are really meant to be played by two players, you know. All I really do here is I shoot, and I can, I can straighten out my cannon, or I can bend it even further to aim these shots a little bit. And you get one point per kill. And it makes these good-ass noises. There's some modes where you can move your, your base back and forth a little bit. This is not one of those modes. Wait, did it? Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. This is nice. This is nice. To have this here for this is a great way to present Atari 2600 games. This is great to be able to really see what the heck any of this stuff even is. That's awesome. Instead of having to sit there and hit the select button and say, like, do I want game six or game eight? I don't know anymore. I don't remember. You know, all that stuff. Oh, God. 
Well, presumably this game is somewhere between A and B alphabetically. A dead end hides a secret room in Graves Academy to find its treasure. Pass the test. It's elementary. So there's a hidden game somewhere in that haunted house reimagined. All right. Breakout Canyon Bomber. The Atari 2600 version of Centipede. You can play the chill. Yeah, some of these late model silver box Atari games had children's version, which would draw that little teddy bear uh, image on screen. And, you know, it would be like an easier version of a game. Like this has it, like Ms. Pac-Man, I think, has it. Yeah, you know, these blocks are supposed to be mushrooms. Everyone knows that. I guess this doesn't have E.T. and it doesn't... There's, yeah, there's... Hmm. It would be cool if this had E.T. It would be cool if this had Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, it does not have Pac-Man, right? I don't think it does. Combat's great, but it has no uh, AI in it, so... I love these, you know, the jets, guided missiles, no clouds, 1v3... Some of those licensed Parker Brothers games, there is some third party stuff in here. But, like, you know, if they had that G.I. Joe game with the gigantic fucking snake, that'd be cool. Prototype comes out to play upon the fields of War Divine. Reimagine tanks. What are you waiting for? So, I guess you gotta play Quadra Tank to unlock this. This is probably Combat 2, which is not good. <laughs> um, home version of Crystal Castles. Dark Chambers is a weird... Uh, this is... Uh, yeah. Is this one of the last? So, 89. Think about that. 1989, Atari was putting out 2,600 games. That's years after the release of multiple better machines that they had released. It's years after the release of the NES also. So, imagine like this game compared to the... This is the year the Genesis came out, right? I mean... I mean, it's pretty crazy to look at this compared to, you know, the 2600 games that were coming out in the late 70s. Yeah, give me that poison. Yeah, it'd be great to have, uh, what, Spider-Man, G.I. Joe, Empire Strikes Back, the stuff that, that Parker Brothers put out. Some of those arcade ports were really um, good to Amadar. I'm a big Amadar 2600 fan from way back, baby. Ask about me. Level C. All right, this is... Demons to Diamonds. A shooting gallery designed for younger gamers. Yeah, this is a, this is a weird game. Yeah, 
Do I not want to shoot these guys? And I want to shoot the... I don't... I'm supposed to shoot the diamonds, I guess. So I'm getting points for that, but I, I'm not really getting a lot of points for some of these. I'm not getting points for killing that guy. So I guess, yeah, you probably don't want to shoot the guys that turn into the skull and crossbones that... That guy gets the points. Oh, missed it. And yeah, when I hold, I have to hold the button down to shoot long. If I just tap it, it shoots like that. It's kind of an interesting. Dodge him. A classic. 1990. One of the last two 2600 games to be released. So new that it has the idea of a, like a password feature in it. How insane is that? No, I want to reset the game because I need to... Oh, man. What what do we do here? I guess we... Why is it not... I can't get out. Oh, there we go. I'm not quite sure what holding the button down does here. It makes that noise, which is fun. Fire machine gun. Okay, was it, is the are the machine gun bullets red, and that's why I don't see them? Or are they just invisible? <laughs> well, I'm all out of bullets either way. You don't see any either? Okay. Alright, the bullets are just invisible then. But yeah, what a crazy idea. The idea of a game coming out in 1990. It was like this and was Double Dragon the other one? I forget, but... Oh, we're getting hit by something. I don't know what I don't know what's happening there. Now I can only go 110. All right, that stuff seemed to be bad on account of it blew up my car. Look at this pulsating game over screen. 1990. Some people have learned some tricks. The original haunted house. All right, here we go. Well, this is not the, this is a... Yeah, this is not a this is not a great. Ugh, this game. Minor twenty forty nine er is uh, look, well, I can't even I can't even like. Outlaw, Quad Run. There's another. Game designed by Riddle? Matt Riddle made a video game? Oh, all these sports games. Real sports and... Saboteur. Oh, so this is the game that was also... There's a, another prototype of this that is... Uh, an A-Team game. Where instead of this weird alien thing, you're just like a giant Mr. T-Head. I'm 
I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be shooting and not shooting here, but... I can shoot in eight directions and walk back and forth. Kill a warhead on bottom. Do I have to hit the... Do I have to bounce the shots off him? And then try to hit the glowing things? Yeah, that's probably what I need to do. But I only have 13 seconds, 12 seconds left. We're not going to get it done. I think everyone's dead. That's a cool looking trail off the rocket. Oh. We did it. Well, now we need to go back to saving Gorfons. What's the manual for this even look like? Master robot, construction robot, escaping Gorfon. Yarfly, of course. Warhead battle, warhead assembly. 57 points for killing the master robot. 57. Secret quest. Yeah, I feel like these 80s, these like late 80s games get really abstract in a way that just the manual becomes. Wait, what? Oh, okay. Dangerous to go alone, I guess. Okay, yeah, just got to decode this sick hidden, like we're playing Tunic all of a sudden. Alright, alright, secret quest. Sonic Keys. Re-entry code. You can look at the status screen anytime by pushing the TV type switch up or down. Yeah, so if you set it to black and white, it'll show you your sub screen. That's what they had to do. Like what, what other buttons are we going to use for? That's funny. Here we are. That's funny. Okay. Surround is kind of, it's, uh, you know, the Tron light cycle game, but it does not have AI in it, I don't believe, so. Oh, no, it does. One player. I'm on the right. 
remember there was this guy, Paul, that worked for my parents. And he had an Atari 2600, and he, he had this game. I remember being at his house, seeing it for the first time. Diagonal movement. Oh, you can you can you can turn that on if you want to get really crazy. Yeah, a lot of games had this kind of weird chart about like, do you want here are the four different game modes? You can turn them on and off, you like all that sort of stuff. And here are the sword quest games. Here's the sword quest earth world. Same type deal of like, okay, this, what, do I want this lady? What's the, okay, we'll pick up this, I guess. And then I guess I'll go over here. No, I guess we'll go this way. And now we got to dodge this, these lines. Nope. Oh. Ah. We made it, so I guess I get this, and this is the sign of the zodiac that the room is, or something. I, I don't know. I get this ring. What's it do? Who can say? As far as I know, you can never go sideways. Maybe there's a different item you get for that. I don't know. We get a pitchfork, or uh, we don't. We're out of inventory space. We need to figure out. Like, should I get rid of this rope? I don't know. Do we get the candle? Why not? Let's see what it's got in the instruction manual here. Helpful hints. I should watch a speed run of this game and just see what it looks like to, as you will recall from reading the Earthworld comic book, Tor and Terra must use the magical objects to get at the hidden sword. Oh yeah. As I, of course, as I will recall from reading the Earthworld comic book. Clue, 16.5. Look on page 16, panel 5, to find a clue that will help you solve that puzzle. So, yeah, I mean, I would have to, yeah, here it is. Well, they did a, uh, They did what they needed to do with DC to get this in here, but could not get, um... Well, what's page 16, panel 5, 1, 2, there's only, there isn't five panels! I've been lied to. The wizard's jewel. That must be how the demon's tracking us. He can smell that jewel. Oh! Such intrigue. I remember that picture of Taurus the bull and you are my prisoner. I remember that. What a weird thing. I get, you know, weirdly ambitious, I suppose. You know, the idea of like, let's put out four games and comic books and all the other stuff and the $150,000 Sword Quest Challenge. And and then it became 1983 and, uh, well, you know. Here's original Yar's Revenge. So you see the, the reimagined version, pretty, pretty much just this. Ah. Got bumped into that thing and killed. I always loved this game. I don't know. I just, something about it felt good.
Yes. All right. So we'll sh uh, if you if you're not familiar with the game, you got to shoot your way through to open up a path to that. Then when you touch it, you see that rectangle on the left side appears. That's our big missile. We want to line it up and then hit the button to fire it off. And then we want to hit the the base here, like like so. And then we win. But if you don't clear a path, then it's not going to happen. There. Anyway. I could play Yara's Revenge all day. Now we're on to the 5200. I You heard me say on the podcast recently that I think the 5200 is bad. And the bulk of that is because of the controller. Um, I'm going to see how this feels, but we're going to play this later. Uh, we're going to play a different version of this later. Okay, yeah, seems fine. Yeah, D-pad controls seem good. This is, yeah, totally fine. All right, we'll come back to that one. And then, so I guess this is the... I'm curious to see how they did this because the 5200 controller had a keypad on it. I played this game on computers and so you had a whole keyboard in front of you in this. So that's like, okay, all right. Look at this. You are. What the fuck? What do we do? What? I, what? Enhanced and overclock is really, yeah, yeah, there's probably a lot of slowdown in this game, huh? All right. Oh, man. Okay, so analog stick to move because, yeah, they did have an analog controller. Speed increase and decrease on the triggers up for the nav con. I assume that's the... Attack computer, manual targeting, tracking. It's a lot to keep track of. Okay, let's go galactic chart. Let's go here. There's four enemies to kill. Okay, hit the right bumper for shields up. We'll pick up our... Okay, so the throttle's there. It's a... Uh, attack computer. What do I... Oh, no, we don't want a hyper warp. We want... Computer tracking on. Attack computer on. We don't want aft view, though. Why is it giving me aft view so often? Oh, I'm getting fucking shot to shit, man. Overclock indeed. Look at how fast this moves. That's so cool. I don't know. Again, it's, it's giving me after you a lot. I don't know. Is that a dead zone thing? Is something happening here? It keeps flipping me back to F. Why? Why is that happening? Long range scan. Don't need it. We want forward view, and it keeps flipping me to F. View. What's going on? X is the attack computer. Right bumper is shields. I'm not. We need to look at the controls because I need to see what the, what the Y button is supposed to be doing here. Manual targeting. Oh, is that... 
That's what it's doing. Okay. There we go. No, it's still even in, in It's still doing that. What is that? That's weird. Okay, well this sector's clear. Let's go to this one. It also has four ships in it. Leave the targeting computer on. Shields up. Let's try and get... Okay. You can shoot the enemy's shots if you're lined up to do so here. Our radar is... Alright, let's... Come on, fucker. I, I don't... It keeps forcing me to aft view. What? A, why is it... Like, it's pointing me at something, and so when I, when I flip around, it shows me aft view like it's supposed to be showing me something else, but there's not... Um... It's weird. I don't know why that's happening. Um, all right, let's go here. There's three here. I left the shields up. That's a bad use of energy. I'm not being efficient. Yeah, it, it seems like no matter what I do with the Y button, it is really wanting to just automatically flip me into that aft view, and I don't understand why. Is this sector clear? Did I, did I get everybody? Oh, wrong button. Uh, what do we want? We want... Yeah, okay. Let's go over here. I think there's only one. That means there's only one here. Targeting computer. Okay. Thank you for the text message. <laughs> I don't remember the game doing that. Well, because because I feel like you would always want the cursor on. How are we doing on uh wait nope 5800 that's plenty of energy we're playing on novice it's not you know we may not need to dock here because it's close by nope nope nope, nope. left bumper I want to hit that okay wait Now I'm wondering if is that is this is something that you know, I, well I'll have to go back and play the the Atari 800 version. Like I don't know if that's something that's like did the 5200 version do this and the other version didn't or something because I don't think I ever really played this on the 5200. Uh, anyway. For a while, this was kind of like the only game I played uh, on that Atari. 
Oh, okay. We need. We are gonna need to go get some energy, huh? Let's figure that out. Let's go here, since it's over near those four ships. I forget how to find it now. <laughs> uh, obviously, the long-range scan shows it there, so we're, we are moving towards it, but is it going to show up in the radar like it was an enemy there? Is that... There we go. Here we go. computer tracking. There we go. Okay, we've been refueled. Let's get out of here. I always forget that I need to throttle up when I come in. You know, there was a while there that I was playing this game on, like, the harder difficulties and all that sort of stuff, but I think I eventually just settled into a groove of just, like, I would just play the game on Novice over and over again. But you wouldn't really take as much... There we go. Um, component damage. And so there's a whole damage mechanic in this game where your systems, you see the lights down there for subspace radio, long-range scam. Like, you can take damage in a way that makes your ship fucked up. So, like, the engines don't work right, or you, you don't shoot as as well, and so you have to go dock at a space station to to get that back. And so there's, like, a depth to that that's really awesome, and seeing your different systems get damaged and, and all that stuff was really cool. Maybe I'll... Okay, this is the last batch of enemies, so maybe I'll, I'll just go in with shields off and get hit a few times, and we can see what sort of, uh, what sort of damage we take. If these guys can line up a shot. Oh, right. No. You just take one. <laughs> okay, you, you don't just take damage when your shields are down. Turns out you take damage, damage. That's, ah, look at this. It's got music. It's got a logo. With, uh, yeah. It's very fancy. Very fancy. But yeah, I think, well, well, I mean, we'll just try commander mission and see how bad that goes, but, uh, oh, right, we gotta, we have to actually steer, But some of the, you know, like your when your engine takes damage, it'll, you know, damage control, computer destroyed. That's bad. We need that. Yeah, that's we need that for where we're. Uh. All right, we still got two enemies left here in, in this area, so let's see if we can handle them. If we do a long range scan, well, yeah, we okay, we still do a long range scan. might be a good time for after you see if they're chasing me okay what now subspace radio we don't need it it's fine it's a radio what i think that means your does that mean your long range scan or your your sector scan stops updating if i remember correctly but it's been it's been photons damaged okay we're only shooting one now that's bad 
We can't shoot at all now. That's bad. Let's uh, try and go to a star base here. Oh, but we have to keep that in the center of the screen without having the crosshairs. Uh, anywhere's better than here, though. Okay. Where are we? Close to where we wanted to go. Oops, wrong button. <laughs> Let's try again. There we go. Oh, so we don't see ourselves in the long range scan anymore. Is that one of the... I forget. Um... Yeah, I forget. It's been it's been a really long time. I forget how to do this without the instruments. But it's kind of we're kind of on the right plane, sort of, right? Well, all right. I we gotta I gotta wrap this up in a little bit here. So there's, there's a whole lot more games in here. Seventy eight hundred. I bet this 7800 the 7800 is a really weird thing ninja golf is a great game I, i've streamed some ninja golf before i bought a copy of hard driving for the links just yesterday <laughs> uh went to my local game store and was like what do they even have here um basketball malibu bikini volleyball scrapyard dog super asteroids and missile man turbo sub it's a weird selection of links games And then here we are at the 800. Not a ton of 800 games in here, but like, honestly, this is uh, if the the latest episode of the Jeff Gerstmann Hall of Fame, which is available at Patreon.com/slash Jeff Gerstmann, uh, happens to be all about me playing this game and Bounty Bob Strike Back, uh, Bounty Bob Strikes Back, the sequel. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I get into it, I, it, it ended up being honestly a little like weirdly emotional. I, I just, these games hit me at a time in my life when, um, you know, we, there was a while that we were like living in a hotel and because our house flooded and we had to evacuate and there was just a lot of stuff around that time and um uh, and yeah uh it, it, i these these games these two games are two of the greatest games ever made it's so cool that they're in here too cuz they're not these are not made by atari these are this is big 5 software and uh these games i guess well i i want you know they they got put out. The creator put them out on his website years ago, bundled with an uh, Atari emulator. And um, yeah, they, uh, there's uh, just amazing platformers. I just realized I've, I've been I, I, I've been engrossed in this. I haven't really been looking at the chat. So, okay, yeah, that's cool. Right stick to oh, man, that's neat. That's a good way to handle that. So you select teleporters by flicking the right stick up and down. So this would be a situation where you would have a keyboard in front of you, so you could push the keys one through four uh, to choose which floor you wanted to go to, and um. And then I think there was, I don't know if this is what they did on the 5200 or, or what the situation was, but I screwed this up. 
I screwed this up. I should have gone up and got that one. Um, okay, we gotta act fast here, so... You had to hack this in? Okay, well, awesome. Awesome. Alright, big question here. How, how far of a ledge is this? I'm gonna say it's too far, but we're gonna find out the hard way. Alright, we lived. Nope, not gonna make it up there in time. That's fine. Yeah, that's good. This is that's a really that's a really cool way to handle this. Yeah, these games, I man. This one has 10 levels. I want to say Bounty Bob Strikes Back has 25 or something insane like that and you know, some of them get a little uh, gimmicky as you go, but like that's it's not the most efficient way to oh do this. Oh god, we gotta get up there and get that guy. I screwed this up. Oh, I screwed this up. That's okay. Get up here, get this. Oh, no, 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 I... Oh, man. Oh, dang it. We'll do this the right way this time. We'll go get this first. Oh, right shoulder to fast forward. Oh, that's... Okay, that's cool for some of these climbs, huh? But right bumper to reset. <laughs> <laughs> it's like zone 10, but not. get this in here, then we don't have to go back down and get it. Okay. Um. Getting careless. Okay, let's get this one and then get up here and get this guy too, just to never have to think about him again. Oh, we messed that jump up and now we're a pile of goo. Oh, I, I, that's, that was weird. Okay, all right. Getting too impatient with the fast forward and it is costing me big time. Okay. Can I do this? I can do this, right? Yeah. But I can't jump from there to three. I think I tried that. Can I do this? Yeah. And then I can do this and hurry and do that. Awesome. That fucker walks all the way across. Yeah, when I was, as I said, when I, in the, the Hall of Fame episode, it, 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 that episode will be public relatively soon. It is, it is patron only right now. Um, 
I used to draw like my own minor 2049er levels and stuff, and, and I yeah, I, I spent a good long time. I spent a lot of time thinking about this game when I was a kid. All right, we gotta go the other way because I need that drink. All right, let's plan to get this birthday cake and go get this guy. This is the this is the moment right here uh, that always this last jump. I could not tell you the number of times I have screwed up this this thing right here. Ugh. Okay, like it's, it's not that hard. Like as a kid, for whatever reason, I just couldn't time that button press and. And then this is where we probably stop playing and move on to something else because this level is where I get a little bit out of my comfort zone, to be honest. Can I do that? Yeah. to jump to that moving platform? I guess I do, huh? Nope. Nope. Oh. Okay, we have to go over here for that one. Okay. Huh. I did not think that was going to go well for me, this level. I feel like I always had, like, the first four levels on... Ah, yeah, this big old pit of radioactive waste. What a cool... Ah, this game's so good! I want to jump into that thing on purpose. Well, that'll work, too. I gotta go. Uh, that's, it's already 1.30. I gotta get going pretty soon here, but, uh... Oh. Awesome. It's just... Oh, just such a good game. Just such a good game. God. God, this game's so good. When I saw that this was in the collection, I was just like, I was so thrilled. Like, it's been so long since anyone, you know, this game came out on the like Game Boy. There's a bunch of weird versions of Miner out there. And, and, but this, this is the definitive version of that game. And Bounty Bob Strikes Back is the sequel. Again, there's a, I did, like an hour long video of me playing both of these games. Uh, and, and honestly, the whole thing makes me want to play more of these games. Uh, Bounty Bob Strike Backs add the ability to like have mid-air control. It's so good. Uh, it makes these jumps way crazier. Now I'm dead. Um, anyway, but the subtle 3D effect on the blocks, the just such a good... Oh, oh, this game. Oh, it's got the freaking poster. I, I keep looking at e on eBay at copies of this game like that have the poster and all the stuff and oh. that's so cool
I spent so much time staring at this poster. You have no idea. And I don't have it anymore. I don't know where it is. I don't know where it is. I like I was on my phone on the phone with my mom the other day and I was like, are you there? You have nothing of mine at the house anymore, right? She said, No. And I just but this I don't know where I have this, but I don't know where I have it. And I haven't seen it in you know, I, like all the moves and stuff, moving down here and everything. Like I, I didn't turn up then. Like I, I don't know if I don't know where it is. Caverns of Mars is great. Kind of have to. I'm not need. There's too much in here. I, I might not even get to the Jaguar stuff today. We're gonna have to do something else. But uh, Caverns of Mars is a great scramble, like a vertical scramble clone, I guess. I would say. Where you shoot fuel to get fuel, as the good lord intended. And I, you know, originally I was like, oh, I should start with these games. I'm like, no, because if I start with the, if I start with Caverns of Mars and Minor 2049er and Bounty Bob Strikes Back, then that'll be all we'll play. <laughs> um, and so the difference here from Scramble, I guess, is that we get in here, we dock, time bomb is set, and then we got to get out. But yeah, we have, we didn't look at any of the Lynx stuff. We didn't look at any of the, the Jaguar stuff. Um, obviously, Tempest 2000 is in here. And it's nice to have a good version of that. That that game is not super easy to play unless you have a Jaguar, I guess. Like, there are... The kind of hobbyist emulation stuff for the Jag just isn't where I wish it was, you know? Um... And so Tempest 2000, you can play it, but there's like weird slowdown in it that doesn't necessarily exist in the... Just this noise right here, the from the title screen is... A, oh man, this game is, this is a great game. This is a great game. I love this game. This game was made by like a, like what's the story? It's, it says on the... Made by a teenager. Yeah, senior in high school. And it was part of the APX, the program exchange, and and then, which I didn't know any of this when I got the cartridge, but, um, Club Drive, I, eh. Fight for Life, it's, it's awesome that there's so much Jaguar stuff in here too, and I'm gonna say, I don't think that, I, you know, I'll have to play them more, because I don't remember Ruin or Pinball, but, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say all of these games are bad <laughs> and it's awesome that they're in here uh, with the exception of Tempest 2000 which has a great soundtrack and all that stuff I You gotta play precisely and not shoot all the enemies too quickly if you want to get as many power-ups as you can get. See, my AI... Oh, see, I missed that one because the drone got it and I was in the wrong lane and now we're not gonna be able to warp. Okay, we did we did get enough to do the warp. But we still need two more for the warp and I'm probably not gonna play enough just now to... This is an awesome game. 
Uh, this is a, a great reimagining of Tempest. It's kind of the only game I would say makes the Jaguar a thing. And then, you know, like versions of this would get released elsewhere. Like there's what Tempest X3 on the PlayStation is basically this game. But it just, I don't know. It just didn't, it didn't feel right on PlayStation. I don't. And I don't remember why now, but, um. Yeah, and it came out on the PC. I remember the PC version being kind of like okay for what it was. Considering, you know, the, I guess the state of PC ports at the time. Uh, take what you can get there for a while. Oh, I missed that one. Oh, I missed that one too. We're never going to warp now. Oh, man. All right, maybe we can get on this level and then... And then, like I said, I gotta go. I'm, I'm late. I gotta, I gotta get going. But, um... Yeah, I definitely want to check out the other Jaguar stuff in it and... I wonder how easy it would be to... Pull some of these files apart and... Stick different Jaguar games in it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um... This is a great collection. I, you know, this is, there's, and there's so much more here in terms of just the, like all this stuff to the Jaguar era, just the, the different timeline stuff. Like, I, it's so crazy. And it's so awesome that this is presented at the front, that this is like the main way to explore the collection. Like I was saying, like that this timeline is, is kind of the, the main mode in the game library is like, yeah, if you just want to play the games, they're over here. But like, this is the menu to the thing. That's so awesome. This should be the, the way this stuff is done going forward, I think. You know, like, the, as long as the supplemental material is available, right? I mean, if it ain't there, it ain't there. But but this is such a cool way to do this stuff and all the video and, and, and all of that. It's so neat to see. And it's a good reminder that, like, Atari used to be something, you know? <laughs> um... Like, Atari used to mean something. I think a lot of people forget that, you know, because it's been a long time since Atari was truly relevant, since Atari was truly doing great stuff. It's been over 30, you know, like, like is Tempest 2000 the last, like, great thing that Atari released before all the Infogram stuff and before, you know... Like, because at some point Hasbro got the Atari name and they put out the, like, what, like, Frogger on the Dreamcast and a lot of stuff that, like, I, some people like those games. I'm, I'm not a big fan. Like, I don't, I don't like that era of the Atari name either. And then it all got wrapped up in the Infogram stuff. And it just, it just, like, Atari's never going to be Test Drive. They're not, oh, the Test Drive people, like, like to me, right? It's, like, when was the last time that real-ass Atari ex even existed? Like, this seems like it covers that era you know like past the jaguar it was a different thing and even in the jaguar era maybe it was kind of a different thing but uh yeah it, it's a cool collection i it, it's it's awesome to see all that stuff in there um and, and i i'm gonna i'm gonna go watch all those videos i'm gonna go check all that stuff out so um yeah that's gonna do it for me i hope everybody has a great weekend um I'll be back on Tuesday with the podcast and all of that good stuff. And yeah, I'm trying to think if there's any other business. Um, nope, that's me. I'm, I'm late. My, I gotta go save. I gotta go help. Gotta go help with kids. Went a little long. Went a little long and barely, and barely even saw half the games in this thing. Man, it's, 
It's like 90 games. It's funny because it's called Atari 50 and you think like, oh, well, 50 games or what? Okay, all right. But no, it's like, it's like a damn near 100. So I don't know. This thing's pretty awesome. And it's nice to say that about an, an Atari thing because, I, again, I feel like the name has been leveraged to death and so many of the collections that came out were just ass. It's nice to see something that, like, again, like, you know, just the idea that, like, Star Raiders has a HUD or whatever that helps make sense of what systems you have active and all this other stuff. It's crazy. There's an awesome level of detail to that stuff. So, all right. Enough of me. Have a great weekend, and uh, I will see you next week with more stuff. Take care.